our 20th year together. This is the National Football League on NBC. Today, from the Los Angeles Coliseum, it's the Denver Broncos versus the Los Angeles Raiders. Today's game is brought to you by Michelob. Where you're going, it's Michelob. The largest crowd to see an NFL game this year, 90,000 to pack the Coliseum in Los Angeles. A beautiful 70-degree day. Cloudless skies, a battle for first place. The Denver Broncos, the Los Angeles Raiders, both 7-1 in the AFC West. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg with Merlin Olsen. This should be a great ball game. All the conditions are there. And one of the changes from game one at Denver, when Broncos prevailed 16-13, both starting quarterbacks will not start today. Jim Plunkett is injured, so Mark Wilson has taken over at the controls for the Raiders. He threw five touchdown passes at San Diego last week. And Gary Kubiak, second-year man from Texas A&M for Elway, who has a bruised chest. Well, Dick, as, imp as important as the passing game is, in talking to both coaches, the very first priority for them offensively was to establish a running game. They want control of the line of scrimmage. It was Denver's control of the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively, that keyed that big victory for them in Denver. So both of them will be trying to run or stop the run. What if that uh, equals out? What then? If it becomes an offensive battle, then I think the impetus shifts to the Raiders. They just have more strength offensively, especially with Elway out of the lineup, and we do not expect to see him today. Well, the Raiders are considerable favorites. They're playing before a home crowd, but there will be some emotion today. Oh, these are emotional teams. They don't like each other. I think the game in Denver was one of the most physical that I have seen in a long time. Marked by hits like this one, Mecklenburg leveling Marcus Allen. There were also a number of altercations on the field, a lot of fights, and this is going to be that kind of emotional game. So the return match features the Raiders, the Super Bowl champions, against the stingiest team in the National Football league the Denver Broncos Dan Reeves uh, Dick I think if if you were to take a poll around the league right now and talk about coach of the year honors if there was such a thing at midpoint this man would certainly be my forerunner in that department 40 year old Dan Reeves and across the field his counterpart the 47 year old headmaster of the Raiders Tom Flores former University of Pacific great he said in the first game against the Broncos he feels that in an average game you get 13 possessions the fact that the Broncos could control the ball with the run they got the ball only 11 times he said we must get the ball our 13 and score at least a third of the time we own the football well just to put those numbers in perspective the Broncos were able to run up 231 yards on the ground rushing against the Raider defense and there are the standings in the highly competitive AFC West seven and one these two teams Seattle playing at San Diego tomorrow night just a game back and Kansas City and San Diego at four and four Rich Carlos kicks it off we're underway big crowd in the Coliseum Yoki Williams, he's got some room, 25, 30, he's at the 40, 50, Yoki Williams to the Bronco 40, and the Raiders start like gangbusters. It looks like there may have been a penalty call because the defenders are lining up way down the field. As Doki Williams shows you his starting speed, he's going to be playing offensive receiver and play, play some Cliff Branch today. But look at him run away from the defenders here. Good job. Right at the end of the ball, Ken Woodard. Big special teams play there. But no, they're going to give them the full length of that play. No penalties. And the Raiders start an excellent field position. All right, the starting lineup for the Los Angeles Raiders has Mark Wilson, fresh from a big game at San Diego with his five touchdown passes. Marcus Allen, 10 touchdowns, leading scorer in the National Football League, non-kicker. But it's Kenny King who gets the ball on first down and the former Oklahoma Stars to the 34-yard line in the game of five. Number 50, Jim Ryan, after rule on Jones, 75, that made the tackle. The offense for the black jerseyed Raiders. Mark Wilson with Marcus Allen and Kenny King. Doki Williams for the injured Cliff Branch. Malcolm Barnwell, two touchdown catches last week in the tight end, Todd Christensen. The blockers in front of Wilson are Davis, Hannah, Dolby, Mosbar, and Lawrence. Second and five. Marcus Allen in the backfield. Wilson's first throw. Great protection. He's going long for Williams. Well covered. Harden intercepts for the Broncos. Harden at the 50. 
15, 20, 25. He fumbles, and who's got it at the 30-yard line? Broncos say they've recovered the fumble. The official says what? The it's officials the say the Raiders ball. have it. And let's give Malcolm Barnwell some credit on that play. He absolutely stopped Harden upfield, running behind him until he had a chance to go after the football. A brilliant play. He actually became a defensive back on the play. Let's follow it from beginning to end. Wilson going deep to the end zone. Two not interceptions. Oh, not a good throw short. And Mike Harden playing center field on that one. Now, as he heads upfield, we'll show you the end of that play a little later. That was the fourth interception for Harden, but the Raiders get it back. In essence, they gained about three yards on the play, starting from the 34, then the fumble recovery at the 31. King gets very little. Let's go back to that interception by Harden and how he fumbled. Right at the end of the play, he's being stalked from behind by Barnwell. Watch Barnwell sneak up behind him and knock the football out of his hands right there. Strip the football loose. And the ever-present Marcus Allen, one of those around the football for the Raiders. Very alert football. Second down and nine. Allen's first carry. He's to the 27-yard line. Marcus Allen, who played his college football for the University of Southern California on this field. And it's interesting that there are 44 ex-USC Trojans in the National Football League, more than any other university or college has produced for this professional conference. Third and five. Defensively, the white jersey Broncos, and they have been outstanding. Chavis, Carter, and the top pass rusher, Rulon Jones. The linebackers, Ryan Dennison, gets high numbers. Busick leading tackler, Tom Jackson, the emotional force. Wright and Harden at the corners, Smith and Foley at safety. They've allowed only 99 points all year. Third down and five. Wilson, plenty of time. But he's down short of the first down at the 27-yard line. Mark Wilson, Keith Bishop. Mark Wilson not able to find an open receiver on that play. Didn't want a repeat of that interception early. He decided to run with the football. You see him searching downfield. Absolutely no one there. He heads upfield, bumps into Charlie Hanna there. One of his own <laughs> blockers almost dropped the football. Finally, he gets knocked down just beyond the line of scrimmage. He's going to be fourth down, and they'll go for the field goal. Chris Barnes. Oh. Coliseum inside of his helmet. They're trying to take advantage on that play of the aggressiveness of the Denver defense. They knew Denver would be pressing hard from the right side. This is an option, really. Hum has the option of throwing the ball out to Barr, but he already had the first down. Another quick look at it. Just an absolute run. Called in the huddle before the play, and you see how much room they had on the left side of that play. First and ten. Thrown a pass, nor carried the football this year. Gets nearly 10 yards and a first down. Just underway, no score in the Coliseum. Great protection. Wilson underneath the coverage and into the nine-yard line goes Doki Williams, a man who started things with that brilliant 61-yard kickoff return. Well, already the Raiders have had things their way. They started with the brilliant return by Doki Williams, and then they get the return of fumbles, a double fumble in essence, uh, took the ball back again, and then able to go from what looked like a long field goal to a first and 10. Now they're second and short on the 10-yard line. Two yards for the first down. to the six-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Raiders. That Denver defense, and we want to identify Rulon Jones on that tackle. Also Barney Chavis. Look inside as a little handoff there to Kenny King, and you get a feeling for the kind of aggressiveness of that big Raider line. They made a nice hole for Kenny King, and he got good yardage on that play. First and goal just inside the six-yard line. Rod Christensen anchoring the line on the right side. That play seemed to miss fire right from the start. King, a little stutter step in the backfield, and Steve Foley, 43, along with Busick, 58, to make the hit. Let's credit Tom Jackson. He was the man that came in so quickly from the right-hand side and broke up the timing on that play. 
Jackson has just been, had an outstanding year. He's been around a long time, but has impressed everyone with his, not only his aggressiveness, but he is really the emotional leader of this defensive team. And this is where Denver's defense has been toughest. When they're right down inside, looking into the end zone, they have really played exceptional football. And Mark Wilson, rather than execute the play on second and goal from the five-yard line, wants to talk it over with Tom Flores. Interestingly, uh, Wilson didn't call a place in high school or college. He now has that honor as a pro. This crowd still filing into the Coliseum. 90,000 tickets have been sold. It's second and goal at the five-yard line for the Raiders. Wilson, after using a timeout, looking at that tough Denver defense. Marcus Allen, nothing there as he topples maybe a half yard to the four-yard line. Might have been Frank Hawkins who got the call. Barney Chavis and many other white shirts in on the play. Now this Denver defense, not only the toughest to score against in the league, but they've allowed only four, four touchdown passes all year. Wilson had five in one game last week. Hard to believe, eight games and four touchdown passes. This is a pass situation on third and goal from the five, although they have two tight ends in. Wilson. Intercepted at the one-yard line by Dennis Smith. Smith at the five. Flag down, and Smith still on his feet. He might go all the way. Finally knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line by Andy Parker. So that Denver defense, number one in the league, also in the turnover table. They're a plus 18, and they have two interceptions in this first quarter. The Denver defense ranks 18th in the NFL in yardage given up. But the reason they are such a tough defense is because of plays like that. You can get the yardage, but you can't get into the end zone that easily against them. It looks like there was a penalty on the play that's going to take it back toward the end zone, but it's still going to be Denver ball, and they got the turnover. I thought Wilson threw from off his back foot, Merlin. Second time. Above the waist. First down. It's a pressure defense. That's the name of the game for both these teams. And you saw the pressure on Wilson. He threw a pass under the gun, and Dennis uh, Dennis Smith just really went up and made a fine grab on that play. Got up high, and look at him carrying that football. He better tuck that sucker away, or, or the Raiders are going to take it back like they did last time. Smith, who was a teammate of Marcus Allen with the USC Trojans. The ball will be marked back to the six-yard line. Denver will have it when we return. Not starting today, the number one player picked in last year's draft certainly has matured in this his second year Gary Kubiak who was an eighth round pick last season is the quarterback Sammy Winder in the end zone the solo running back that's the H back Sawyer in motion and Winder down at the line of scrimmage Howie Long number 75 made the hit introducing the Denver offense for you Kubiak from Texas A&M with Winder, the solo running back. Right is the H back, the back in motion. Butch Johnson, the ex-Cowboy. Steve Watson, a brilliant wide receiver. And Clarence Kay, perhaps the best of an excellent draft by the Broncos. Stuttered, Bishop, Brian, he's their best offensive lineman. Howard and the rookie Hood at right tackle. He has to block Howard Long as he replaces the injured Ken Lanier. at the 40-yard line. Lester Hayes in the coverage. Defensively, the Raiders actually statistically have better numbers than the Broncos, but where it really counts, points scored. That's all Denver. Howie Long, certainly an all-pro caliber player with Kinlaw and Alzado on the front three. Barnes, Millen, Nelson, and all-pro Rod Martin. Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes, the best pair of cornerbacks in the league, and Davis and McElroy complete an outstanding secondary. I think we're going to see a lot of Brad Van Pelt today. He was in on that first running play. And the Broncos trying to use some misdirection, as they did effectively in Denver, unable to get any kind of edge, as the Raiders appear to, to have certainly geared up that run defense for this encounter. Out of the shotgun, Kubiak. Too much time. 
by Denver. And that's really going to pin the Broncos deep. Now, your opening premise, Merlin, was who will run the ball most effectively? The Raiders did not run well in their first possession. And now the Broncos are already forced into the pass setup. And that's what the Raiders love. Well, very inconclusive here, except this is the perfect setup for a pressure defense. And Reeves, of course, realizing that he's got a young quarterback in there who does not have the rifle arm of an Elway, tries to give him things he can do. I expect them to do something here that doesn't have high risk. Kind of pass that is difficult to intercept here, Dick. That's a bad sign. There seemed to be a bit of confusion in lining up. Kubiak deep in his own end zone, and he's down for a safety. Rod Martin. year that was his eighth and it's worth two points for the Raiders well but you're back to the wall and long yardage the snap coming back here to Kubiak he sees Martin coming in has no receiver he should unload that football but Kubiak eats the football instead gives up the two points now the Broncos are going to have to kick the ball back into the hands of the Raiders We'll add the free kick from the 20 yard line by Denver the Raiders score first 805 left in the quarter him, Merlin. That gives room for other people. They can't double-team everyone. You saw what happened as Kubiak goes down, and now they're going to put it in into play with a free kick, a punt by Norman. The rookie Norman's punt toward Greg Pruitt. Good kick at the 20. Veteran Pruitt returns it to the 32, smothered by several white jerseys. A 12-yard return, leading to nothing. Mark Wilson, who was intercepted twice by the Raiders in their first possession, ducks his head into that huddle. Wilson had had a very good ratio of interceptions and touchdowns coming into this game, but certainly bouncing that football into the wrong hands here in the early going today. One of the things that Dan Reeves said that has already been rather uh, interesting to point it out, he said, we want to win the game of field position. And they have certainly not been able to do that uh, so far today. Although the interception returned by Smith had it out near midfield, only the penalty brought it back. Marcus Allen who has 10 touchdowns this year and 36 in his 32 NFL games, greeted by a former teammate, Steve Busick, number 58 of Denver. Busick, the leading tackler for this Denver crush defense. And they, I thought Max D had a good line in the pregame. He said, "This is is this the real Orange Crush? He said, no, this is kind of the crush light. <laughs> not, not quite up to the standard of the great Orange Crush. Well, they might they, argue with that. They, Tom Jackson thinks they're better. They're getting there, I'll tell you. Plenty of time again. Guns it to Williams. And uh, Williams out of midfield with a chance, but Foley was around him, and he may have been waiting for that hit. And that might be where you miss the veteran Cliff Branch. I'm sure that Doki Williams in his first start is very excited, very emotional. This is an easy pass to catch. It's easy in every way except that Doki Williams is doing too much thinking down there, and he put it back on the ground. Third down and seven. Raiders lead 2 nothing. Seven minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the first quarter. well again that's going to be short of the first down as Barnwell and that little crossing pattern and Ken Woodard of Tuskegee Institute made the tackle number 52 and a tough hitter he is that's the kind of hitting that we had expected today the kind of hitting that typified the earlier game between these two teams look at Barnwell he really felt that one and of course the hit able to shut the play down short of the first down Denver defense tries to keep everything in front of them, Dick, and that's one reason they give up a lot of yardage, but their philosophy is we're going to come up and make the play, force the mistake after you catch the ball. Zach Thomas back at his own 13. Ray Guy to punt. Todd Christensen, the snapper. Whoa, low snap. Guy with those great hands. Lost it. At the 20, fair catch. And the Broncos, this is great field position considering where they were the last time they owned the pumpkin. 39 yard kick. We have a timeout. These two teams, X 
obviously uh, he said he was innocent. Someone took off his helmet. He didn't really take it off himself, and he has been replaced by Winford Hood, number 74, rookie from Georgia, an eighth-round pick. And he has to block Howard Long. First down from the 21. Winder on a counter, and nothing there. And it was Howie Long angling in to make the tackle. We just talked about a helmet being torn off. Let's take a quick look at Winfred Hood as he dives in to try and get a piece of Matt Millen on that play. Did a good job of staying with Millen and driving him off the ball. Matt not very excited about that. Ends up undressing Hood. And that's the kind of play that started a lot of fisticuffs in Denver early on. Meanwhile, Long, who was not blocked by Hood, made the tackle for a yard loss. Second and 11. Underneath to Sawyer, who's back to the 24-yard line, and Lyle Alcedo trailing the play. The veteran makes the hit on Sawyer. Let's bring you up to date on the final scores of early games today. The New England Patriots, they were down, I think, something like 20-3 and rallied to beat the Jets 30-20. Raymond Berry, their new coach. Dallas has defeated Indianapolis 22-3. The Bears, they'll play the Raiders next Sunday in Chicago. They take Minnesota 16-7. It was Pittsburgh, 35, Atlanta 10. The Steelers leading the Central Division are now 5-4. and four. We'll get the rest in a moment. It's third down and seven. Out of the shotgun, Kubiak. Is it complete? No, he did not have control. Ray Alexander, rookie from Florida A&M, and the Broncos will have to punt. Other scores then. The Cardinals defeated Philadelphia 34-14. Cincinnati at Houston, and the Bengals prevail 31-13. Detroit hammered by Green Bay 41-9. Or the Packers were ready to cut loose. New Orleans spoils the debut of Marty Schottenheimer as the Cleveland Browns coach. 16-14, the Saints win in Cleveland. So you're up to date on all the finals. Here 2-0 as Chris Norman averaging 39.7 a kick. He's had a big one, 83 yards earlier this year. So he's got the leg. Throw it. Beautiful kick. Throw it at the 21-20. And after the bobble, Still on his feet, down at the 25-yard line. So the Raiders with a 2-0 lead get a five-yard return, 56-yard punt by Norman. Well, Walter Payton against Marcus Allen next Sunday right here on NBC. Quarterback in the league at 6-6. Good numbers, eight touchdowns. He had only two interceptions prior to today. And there are the Broncos. Four touchdowns allowed, passing 23 interceptions, counting their two today and 30 sacks. Wilson, good protection. He finds the seam, just floating that one to Williams. That was a terrific throw. He had to hit it hard enough to be able to get it to Williams before the deep man got there and yet had to loft it enough so the linebacker didn't intercept. No one has ever questioned Wilson's ability to throw the football. He has wonderful touch on the football. And with that height you mentioned, good vision downfield. He did a good job on that particular play. And again, you see the Denver defense trying to keep everything in front of them. They don't want to give quite that much room, though. That's a big gainer. Good field position now for the Raiders. Jimmy total yards, third possession for the Raiders. Over the middle, Pistons has his first catch, and the big tight end is bulldog down by Tom Jackson, who is actually giving away about 15 pounds on that hit. Talk to Charlie West about Christensen, and he said something very interesting. He said, you'll never see a tight end work longer or harder to get open than Todd Christensen will. He said, but one of the advantages that he has is because the Raiders run so many deep patterns, they give he and Marcus Allen a lot of room to work in the mid areas. Seven yards on that catch. And now Frank Hawkins. Oh, he's tough to bring down. You talk about the fire plug build. Hawkins at 5'9 and 210 pounds. Down in the pits, we talked about control of the line of scrimmage. And the Raiders doing a good job on this play of giving some room to Hawkins. You saw Rulon Jones, number 75, diving in, actually trying to trip Hawkins. Hawkins able to leap over Rulon's body and, and get some extra yardage. Good play. Raiders in Bronco territory at the 45. 
Marcus Allen, and he had a step on Tom Jackson. And they caught the Broncos in a blitz. Had Allen caught that one on the run, it could have been trouble for Denver. Down the way in Anaheim, the 49ers have scored against the Rams 3-0 in the first period. Buffalo trails at Miami 7-0 in the first quarter. That's the unbeaten against the non-winning Bills. 7-0 Giants early against the Redskins at home. So far, the Broncos unable to get a great deal of physical pressure on Mark Wilson. Hawkins and Allen behind Wilson. Marcus Allen. Oh, nice move by Allen to the 40 and down to the 36-yard line. Jim Ryan, number 50, had him in his sights all the way, and then Marcus, with that little move inside and the duck outside, had escaped. Great athletic ability. This is the kind of thing that a great athlete can do. Notice how the Raiders have spread the action. Sideline to sideline. Right here. Marcus is the outlet man. Takes what could have been a, no, a non-gainer and turns it into a, a very healthy gain. They're going to be shortened about three. Third down and about a yard to go, Dick. Nine yards on the pass play to Allen to the 36-yard line. Third and one. on third and one. And they're going for it all. Marcus Allen. Touchdown. Marcus Allen. His fourth touchdown catch. His 11th score of the year. Joe Collier very proud of the fact that his defense is so hard to score against with the passing game. He told me earlier, he said, I love to watch Marcus Allen play, except when he plays the Broncos. And you saw the reason why on that particular play, Marcus isolated one-on-one -on, -one on Dennis Smith, the safety, and he still outran him cleanly to go in for the TD. Chris Barr's point after is good. Marcus Allen on a deep swing. The invaluable Allen open again. A 36-yard touchdown throw and catch. Wilson to Allen. Quick look at it. You see Wilson getting time here. I think everyone in the park expected a run on this play, including the Denver defense. Look at the high trajectory on that ball. Marcus adjusting late to that ball, how he had to run under it. Beautiful job. Mark Wilson, and this is the kind of pass he showed the Charger defense last week. Just not overthrowing, lobbing it high, letting Allen run underneath it. Six points to match the number on the quarterback's jersey. And he's gotten a lot of those in a short amount of time. Isn't it interesting that, that Wilson, now in his fourth year with the Raiders, has actually started less games than Elway of Denver? Well, he certainly has started that many ball games, but he has been productive. Chargers found that out in the shootout last week down in San Diego, and the Broncos are finding it out here today, and this is not the kind of game they wanted to play, Dick. They wanted a low-scoring game. They wanted a defensive game. They don't want to try and match offensive prowess with the Raiders here today. Raiders go 75 yards in six plays. Dan Reeves talking with his quarterback, Kubiak. Reeves, a quarterback in college at South Carolina, but better known for his success in the NFL with the Cowboys as a halfback and a good uh, option halfback. He had 30 completions as a half run pass to the Cowboys. Zach Thomas, after having some problems with that low kick, gets it out to about the 18 yard line. Brought down by Derek Jensen. Derek Jensen, the captain of the special teams for the Raiders making the tackle so the Broncos trailing nine nothing and with a minus one yard showing for offense in their first two series start inside the 20. It really hurts to have to have both Lanier and of course Elway more than anything Elway because that forces Dan Reeves to change his offense. Kubiak perhaps audibleizing. 
Winder ducking to the 20 to 21 and hit hard by Rod Martin who was trailing the play Martin 220 pounds and he is really an inspiration for all you athletes who perhaps aren't as big as you want to be when he left USC he weighed less than 200 pounds was picked in the 12th round in fact the Raiders called John Robinson then the coach at USC said do you have anyone who hasn't been picked yet we're in the 12th round we have one pick left left and Robinson said yeah no one's taken Martin I think he can play in the NFL he didn't make it they cut him San Francisco picked him up they cut him he said but I never thought I couldn't play I just hung around and waited for the phone to ring now he's an all pro he makes some helmets ring out there, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Steve Watson has a first down for the Broncos at the 36-yard line. Mike Haynes makes the tackle. 15 yards for Watson, a free agent himself out of Temple. I asked Dan Reeves what kind of changes he would have to make with Elway out of the lineup. He said, we're going to have to throw more quick passes. That's the kind of pass he was talking about right there. Just a, a drop back, very quick drop back, and a timing pattern to Watson, who's a very athletic, a very graceful receiver. I think one of the most artistic receivers in the NFL. Broncos own their first first down of the game. Comes in the final minute of play, 15 seconds left. Quarter. Winder in a crowd. Not much there. Reggie Kinlaw, the nose guard, stacking up the play. Four seconds and the clock running. And a few extra words as the first half, first quarter is over. The Los Angeles Raiders on a safety and a Marcus Allen touchdown lead the Denver Broncos 9 to nothing. Welcome back to the Coliseum in Los Angeles. A crowd, some 90,000 here at the Coliseum. You played here not often before an uh, audience this large. What's the feeling down on the floor of this uh, ancient arena? Well, you can feel them, Dick, but you, they're a long ways away from the field. It's not like being in a stadium where the crowd is right on top of you. Not like one of those covered uh, stadiums. No, not like a dome. On second down and nine, this is Kubiak. Going long. from McElroy. Steve Watson, another brilliant play. They've come to expect that from this sensational six-year receiver from Temple. Well, we said athletic and acrobatic, and here is Watson to prove it. Reeves said that Kubiak has a nice touch on the long ball. That one was thrown nicely, but could have been intercepted. Had Watson not done his layout act, I think we could give him, a, what, a half gainer on that one, Dick? He went way out to strip that one out of the hands of the defender. Steve Watson, 41 yards on that reception. His hobby when he's not playing football is art. He likes to get involved in cultural things. And boy, that indeed was a nice little painting on the canvas here at the Coliseum. You mentioned the crowd. One way to quiet them down is with that kind of play. And the Broncos, their deepest penetration when we come back. They're at the Raider 22. Kaleidoscope of color, the Coliseum in Los Angeles still freshly painted those gay colors from the Olympic uh, Games performances here. And a colorful crowd on a shirt sleeve, 70 degrees, Southern California afternoon. The Broncos trailing 9-0 early in the second quarter have a first down at the Raider 22. Dick, we talked about Ken Lanier being on the sideline. He's in the game right now. He has an injured left ankle. And the most difficult thing for him to do is to drop back and pass protection. On that play, he's trying to cut off Howie Long on the back side of the play. You see how quickly Howie Long gets into pursuit. It's one of the reasons he's rated so uh, so highly as a defensive end. Plays not only the running game extremely well, but a very stout pass rusher. And Ken Lanier has his hands full, but he's in there with a bad ankle today. Second and six. Kubiak. And no one there. Clarence K, the tight end, and Watson in the area. It may have been intended for K, the rookie from Georgia. From Los Angeles, let's go to New York. The Marino the Marvelous. Oh, the magnificent. What numbers he has put together. Oh, 26 touchdown passes and four interceptions almost the reverse of the Bronco defense numbers. Third down and long. Uh-oh, oh, free ball. Andrews got it. It looked 
looked like the Broncos had it all the way, but it couldn't be. It rolled right into the arms. Yes, Howie Long, the Raiders recover. as he did a good job of hand-fighting Howie heading for the football, but unfortunately, the Raiders end up with the football after the sack. And it was Rod Martin who forced the fumble. So quickly and cleanly. You see the back leaving there. I think Sammy Winder maybe should have been checking for the blitz before he left. Kubiak just couldn't see him, and you saw it. You saw Lanier fighting Howie Long for that football. Here's a better shot of it. I watch Lanier actually holding Howie here. He gets to the football first, but can't hang on to it. Howie rolls over and steals it back. Trick or treat, and it's Long with the pumpkin. First down at the 32 as the Raiders deny the Broncos. It's 9-0, 13 minutes left in the half. Marcus Allen stays in bounds. Although I thought I heard a whistle, he may have stepped out back at the 40-yard line in front of Tom Flores. Indeed he did. He'll take it back there, but what tremendous body control. Stretching to the outside. There's the tap. You saw the dirt fly on the sideline. The officials blowing their whistles and waving their hands at Marcus uh, just a few weeks ago. We saw a play like that where Marcus hit the ground, jumped up, and the Seahawks, AL Seahawks, thought the play was dead. Marcus continued on downfield for another 40 yards. Kenneth Allen with four yards on that carry. Kenny King. And Mike Harden. Boy, did he guess right. Harden said, you just try to go outside, and Harden cut off the path and made a solid hit. Playing on that right corner. He's from the University of Michigan. Likes to travel. He likes to model, he says. He also likes horticulture. There's got to be a line in there someplace. <laughs> <laughs> well, he likes play. He likes making that kind of play, too. And, you know, he's the guy that was picked on in the secondary last year. He's really come around. He's playing a lot better football. And people still go over there and say, let's test him. But uh, with three interceptions against these Raiders, he's passing the test pretty well. Third down and nine. A loss of three on that last play. Great protection. Oh, wide open again, but overshooting Malcolm Barnwell was Wilson. He had a sure six, and they did indeed. It was Steve Wilson playing on that sidelines that was well beaten. Two big touchdowns last week for Malcolm Barnwell, and this is the vertical game that the Raiders talk so much about. Deep receivers on the right sideline. Look at the way Barnwell has already blown by Harden. Harden unable to keep speed with him, but the ball just overthrown. Oh, the Raiders benefit Defense. from a holding call. Number 45, illegal use of the hand. Not only was Wilson beaten on that last pass play, but he had held in the judgment of the officials, so that gives an automatic first down on the five-yard penalty to the Raiders. Wilson, a man who knows a little bit about receiving last year, was used very often as a wide receiver as well as a defensive back. His daddy played on this turf for the Los Angeles Rams. TD Tommy Wilson. That's the on time. That was even before me. No. Yeah. No, look out. Bubble. And who's got it? Wilson may have scraped it back. Yes, he did. Tom Jackson in from behind, and Wilson didn't hear him coming. No, and that's the kind of play. We, we talked about the similarities, the pressure defense of these two teams. You saw the blindside hit and the fumble a few moments ago from Rod Martin. Now you're going to see the blindside ball knocked away. Jackson coming all the way from behind. Watch him now. He sneaks in from the backside and knocks the football right out of Mark Wilson's hands. But look how alert Wilson is. He's the man that dives for that football and gets it back. It's recorded as a sack for the Broncos. Started today even with the Raiders, 30 each. Draw play to Allen, weaving his way to a first down at the 47 of Denver. you think about it, makes you salivate. Walter Payton and Marcus Allen. We'll see him next Sunday in Chicago, Soldier Field. And a couple of BYU quarterbacks. And, of course, along with uh, Wilson. But look at look at the moves here. Look at the lateral moves. The flow of, of Marcus Allen. He is poetry, the way he can pick and move and accelerate. 
scares the heck out of you if you're a defensive player, I'll tell you. Now official, a first down at the Denver 47. The score is 9-0, 11-25 left in the first half. Over 100 yards last week for Marcus Allen against the Chargers. That's the first time he's done that regular season since last year against Miami. He said he really feels good physically. And uh, he said, I don't want to make any predictions, but I do feel good for this game. He dumps it out to Allen. And not much there. Tackled at the 43 by Dennis Smith. Allen is the only American conference back with over a thousand yards from the line of scrimmage passing pass receiving and running and he is the leading running back as far as receptions are concerned 39 catches as you saw Keith Bishop Bishop on the sidelines from Baylor uh oh that's not good news member of that offensive line. Second and six with Allen in motion, and Wilson slips under the pressure of Tom Jackson. Jackson again. Tommy, look at him. He, he talks to these Raiders. They don't like they don't like Tommy. They really don't. In fact, you know, he talks Rod, to him a bit. Rod Martin said, the only thing I don't like about the game today is that Jackson is playing on defense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he does an outstanding job. He got in so quickly on Mark Wilson that Wilson had no choice. He simply went to the ground. Two times that they have sacked Mark today. And the interesting thing about the Broncos, they have so many players with sacks in their lineup. Now, a lot of times you look at the... At a, Look at a defense and four or five people have sacks. The Broncos have a whole list of people who've made sacks. Back rule on Jones with five leads the way. Third and 12. Complete to Christensen. And that tight end from Brigham Young has a first down at the 29. Ken Woodard made the stop. 20 yards to Christensen. Well, BYU guys hook it up here. Look at the roll right there. Louis Wright trying to jam Todd Christensen early. It looked like uh, somebody blew a pattern there. Very often, Christensen takes some liberties with his patterns. I think he may have done on that play. Put a heat on Mark Wilson as he, he didn't get a chance to see that one completed. 77 Carl Mecklenburg on Wilson. Frank Hawkins runs right into Reuben Carter. Carter now in his 10th year from Miami of Florida, the nose guard. Gain of about three. In case you joined us late, Rod Martin recorded a safety tackling quarterback Gary Kubiak in the Denver end zone to make it 2-0, and then a 36-yard touchdown throw. Mark Wilson to Marcus Allen made it 9-0 late in the first quarter. The Broncos then on a drive were inside the Raider 25 when Kubiak blitzed by Martin fumbled and Howie Long recovered and the Raiders then have driven down inside the 30 and go long wide open and incomplete as Foley saved the touchdown he stripped it from Barnwell boy did Foley close ground when Barnwell seemed to be all alone when coaches talk about defensive backs one of the things they talk about is the ability to close on a receiver that's the terminology from out of nowhere on the ball but look how Barnwell stays on that football until the last second I think Foley had to strip it out of his hands at the last second to keep him from catching the football and that brings up third and seven, third and seven. at the 26 11th play of the drive after the fumble was recovered by Howie Long Christensen the man to watch he's lined up on the left side of that secondary this time Louis Wright to knock it away well, I say that Louis Wright has maybe lost a little bit of speed he has certainly not lost any ability judge the football perfectly watch him go in and take the football out of Malcolm Barnwell's hands couldn't stop the reception but could keep Malcolm Barnwell from keeping it in his hands yeah he had two touchdown catches last week and he almost had two back to back neither time was he able to maintain possession you can see he was bobbling now bar to try a field goal attempt remember they tried a fake field goal the first time this will be a 44 yard try right up the peristyle end and the Raiders 
Bears have three more. 44 yards for Barr. And with 8.28 left in the half, the Raiders now lead by 12. 12 nothing Raiders. Elway's injury, just exactly what is it? You talk I to talked him. to him this morning, Dick, and he, he said it's right here under the shoulder blade. He said it's the muscle here. And he said it hurts him when he reaches back full range and comes forward. And we watched him in practice. Has no velocity, no strength. That's really what keeps him from being on the field. I'm sure he's dying inside right now. Gary Kubiak, the backup quarterback, will be in charge as the Broncos about to receive Barr's kickoff. 8.28 left in the second quarter. Zach Thomas, fumble. Uh-oh. But he gets out of a pack and across the 10 to the 11-yard line. Rulon Jones, the best pass rusher for this Denver Bronco defense, heading into the locker room. Now, that's not a good sign, although he's, he's going in under his own power. He looks like he has something bandaged on his hand there. They tell us he is going in for x-rays on that hand, and we will have to check that with you a little bit later. Well, ball control was a key. Both coaches talked about it. You can see the Raiders with an obvious advantage in this first half and lead on the board 12 nothing from the 12 yard line. Winder. That's what the Broncos did so successfully in the first game at Mile High Stadium. They started that tailback wide. He looked for the opening and would cut back, and it appears today, at least thus far, the Raiders have shut off all those little pathways. They're doing a much better job of pursuing and flowing. And talking to the Raider players as they were getting ready for this game, they, they said, quite frankly, the Broncos just beat us in every department, in particular on the line of scrimmage, and they beat us with good, solid blocking offensively. Raiders, I think, better prepared and certainly the execution better for them so far in this game, Dick. Second and seven. Complete. John Jim Wright. Short yardage at the 15-yard line. In fact, maybe no gain at all. And Kubiak lucky to unload that one as he was being hit from every direction. Kubiak faking first to Winder, turns back around to look for right, and looks right into those black jersey defenders who are almost eating him up. You see how quickly Mike Davis, number 36, responded to that play, coming up, closing quickly, knocking him down third and about seven and a half, eight yards to go. There's Watson with a catch. And a first down at the 27-yard line. Lester Hayes in the coverage, 11 yards for Watson on his third reception. Lester Hayes this week declared war on Steve Watson. He said, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm going to always say, I've been looking at the films of the Denver offense since we left up there. He put up, when I asked uh, Watson about that, he said, every time I go out there against the Raiders, it's a war. He kind of played it down. But I don't think anyone has been more effective against these two cornerbacks than Steve Watson. up to the right side. Sawyer in motion. Kubiak back to this side to Winder. Knocked out of bounds at the 31. Mike Davis with a hit. Six yards in the play. Kubiak did a good job of coming back from receivers on the right side of the field who were not open and put some velocity on that football. Does not obviously have the, the arm that uh, John Elway is blessed with, but they say he's a very bright quarterback. Has mastered the offense, and, and Reeves, as you noticed, has got him rolling out a little bit. He feels he needs a little extra time, has rolled him out on several plays. Let's see what they do in this second and five situation. Breaks out of Millen's tackle and has a first down before McElroy can knock him out of bounds at the 45. It's 12-0 Raiders here in Los Angeles. Let's check elsewhere. Dolphins are flipping another opponent. Nine in a row should they beat Buffalo, and they're heading toward what should be a terrific game later on. Let's see the Raiders play down in Miami. First down, Broncos. They trail 12-0. Gerald Wilhite as Millen came through a gap 
and drop Wilhite on his first carry of the game. Matt Millen, how often do you see that? Matt missed the tackle. Winder got out for a big gain. I'm sure Millen was kicking himself in the tail. He came right back, made a big play on that situation. A five-yard loss, second and 15, long yardage. This is what Dan Reeves did not want to see Kubiak have to face. This is when the defense can really turn up the heat on a quarterback. Millen, one of the many greats out of Penn State to play linebacker in the NFL. some time and it's intercepted Mike Haynes at the 50 Haynes at the 40 tips over his own man he, and uh, apparently down there he may not have been knocked down by a Bronco but it doesn't matter and three Denver players are slow getting up Will Height's okay finally up number 60 Paul Howard and 63 Mark Cooper the other one they were all knocked down by Peel back blocks. There is a flag, however, down on the field on the far side. Let's see if there isn't a. I believe there might be a roughing call on the Broncos. Let's see. Defense 71. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Yes, that's First what it is. And so. that costs the turnover, Dick. Number 71, Bill Pakel. You saw him. That delicate moment where could he have pulled up or not? The official said he could have gotten out of the way of the quarterback, did not, and instead of an interception by Haynes, it's a first down for the Broncos at the Raider 45. A continuing pattern, we might add. Raiders at times their own worst enemy. Raiders now lead the league in penalties. Ten last week. They had 30 in the two weeks combined before that. And they were on top by some 200 yards atop the NFL last year. So Kubiak and the Broncos get a break. Winder comes at the 42 of Los Angeles by Pickell. Perhaps we can see what the officials saw to cause them to throw the yellow flag. The ball is gone. One, two, two steps. And I think what they may have called was the helmet. That's using the helmet to the head. It's also relatively late, and it looked like Pakel, if he had wanted to, could have avoided that collision, Dick. Second down, seven. 4.24 left in the half. Incomplete, and again, it was Rod Martin pressuring Kubiak. He had to throw over Martin and then prepare himself for being dumped. Score by the Broncos here, Merlin, before the half could really change their whole feeling going into the locker room. Well, Dan Reeves, I'm sure, is not terribly pleased with the way his team has played in the first half, but he wants that score to be a low score. He knows he can't play a high-scoring game against uh, with, the, with the people he has on the field today offensively, so he's got a chance here if they can get down and get seven points to be only two points behind. I'm sure... Looking at it that way, he would not be disappointed if they could get in against the points here. Critical third down, and Kubiak has to call timeout. Both teams now have wasted a timeout in the first half. And there are four minutes, 13 seconds left before the intermission. Big crowd in Los Angeles through the football tuning forks here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles as we zero in on the line of scrimmage the 42 of the Raiders Denver a critical third and seven Kubiak calling a time to double check with head coach Dan Reed they don't want to make a mistake here they need some points to get back into this ball game out of the shotgun will hide in motion and now throw back to winder Flag down, and so is Winder. The hit made by 93 Greg Townsend with McKinney finishing him off. A lot of things happening on that play, including a holding call. Is it a play designed really to take advantage of a defense that reacts quickly? Number 70, holding. Refuse. Fourth down. Dave Stutter, number 70, and ticketed for holding. You see the rush here. Now what you're trying to do is to pull that whole defense over at the look of a rollout. 
Charlie Long right there getting a little holding job, but it was at the bottom of your screen that Stuttered was holding. Little throwback screen, of course, didn't make that much yardage to begin with because of, it was thrown a little late. The timing was not there, but it didn't matter anyway, Dick. They would have marked it off, taking the yards. The Raiders find the penalty, and Norman Wolfon threw it back at the 10. Very, very Good high. Kick. Good kick. Threw it fair catch. They're going to call that a recovery. It's a muff kick. Was he interfered with? Was his chance to I catch don't see, the ball? I don't see a flag on the field. It looked to me like one of the Broncos may have interfered with his ability to catch that football. Now, you can't advance a muff. They'll bring that football back to the spot where it was picked up by the Broncos, but that would give them excellent field position. Maybe we can look at that play and see. Now they're going to give it to the Broncos. Let's take a peek and see if Pruitt did have interference from one of the Bronco players coming downfield. Well, the officials are going to sort it out first. We'll let them do their thing. You hear Millen saying that you've got to give him room right there. The punt was muffed. It can be recovered by Denver, but not advanced. It's their ball at the spot of recovery. At the 16-yard line, Fred Silva's announcement. Here it is. That's Clarence K, number 88. And I do believe that he interfered with the ability to catch. Look at it here. He is right on top of him and actually goes around him. But I think Pruitt thought he was going to be nailed on the play. And that's not, excuse me, that's Hundley. Ricky Hundley, 98, not 88. The young man just activated for this game, making a very big play for the Broncos. That may be the break the Broncos need. They trail 12-0, first down at the 16. Kubiak into the end zone and out of the end zone. Steve Watson, and again, Kubiak. No, it was not Watson. 83, John Sawyer. And under pressure again was Kubiak. He has taken quite a beating. Every time he's thrown the ball, he's hit the turf. One of the reasons that they have had to throw the football is because they're not controlling it on the ground. Let's go back to that play. Now, the rule is very specific. You have to give a man a chance to catch that football. It doesn't matter whether he's made a fair catch signal or not. And Hundley, right on top of him, did not make contact, but didn't give Pruitt room to make that catch. But for Denver, Hundley pays his first dividend. They traded away a number one and a number three to Cincinnati to get this All-American from Arizona. on again for Sawyer. Same play, and this time it was McKinney on the coverage for the Raiders. The Raiders will mix their coverages against Kubiak. They know he has not had that many starting assignments, has not had that many opportunities to get out there and read the complicated defenses of the NFL. They'll keep switching things around on him. And of course, they'll keep the heat on him if they can as well. Broncos' best chance to score thanks to the fumbled punt. 49ers leading the Rams at Anaheim Stadium. Two sellouts today in Southern California, some 30 miles apart. Miami breezing against Buffalo, 17-0 in a second. We'll have all the updates for you at halftime. Third and 10. Look out. Davis crushes Kubiak as the Raiders sent the strong safety in on a dog. The third sack for Los Angeles. And throwing everything but the kitchen sink at Kubiak. They're hoping that he won't read the blitz quickly enough to react in that situation with one single back back there and Winder quickly out. Davis had a free track, goes in over the top. You see Sawyer looking back over his shoulder at Davis, but it's too late. The quarterback's on the ground. Rich Carlos, who has not missed this year inside the 40, he's eight for 11 overall. This will be a 41-yard attempt. Barefooted Carlos. And he's right down the alley with that one. So the Broncos are on the board. The muff punt by Pruitt results in three points for Denver. 3.09 left in the first half. It's 12 to 3. Denver, Carlos tees it up after his 41 yard field goal. We got a report from the Cleveland New Orleans game. And uh, Sam Ritigliano can offer perhaps some solace to the new coach, Marty Schottenheimer. With no time remaining, Morton Anderson kicked a 53-yard field goal to give the Saints that 16-14 win. We'll have all the details, final scores, updates for you at halftime. NFL 84. Carlos' kick is short. So 
Milwaukee Williams at the 10. 20. And wrestle down at the 20. 31 yard line. A 21 yard return for Williams. Here it's 12 to 3. Let's go to New York. In this ball game, one of the things that Denver has not been able to do is to get good position on their kickoffs. Carlos kicked everything out of the end zone in the first game. His kicks have not been very good today, and the returns have been excellent. Marcus Allen, a little draw, and then cuts back and bubbles. bubbles. They stripped it away, and it appears Denver has it. They do. Tom Jackson, and that should be five for taunting there. They talk about uh, the new rules, and if ever there was an example of somebody taunting, there was that, and there's no play. Fumbles have, fumbles have been important for the Broncos. They've picked up 12 of them, 13 with this one. Ryan, the man who goes in and look at him, go right after that football, just broke it loose from the grasp of Marcus Allen. A fight for the football, but the Broncos end up with it. And Jackson uh, getting a little battle there from Bruce Davis. I don't think he wanted any part of him. Tommy's the man that just popped right down on that top of that football. Now the Broncos, who have been best in the league on that turnover table, they were a plus 18 at the start, get another break. They have two interceptions and two fumble recoveries. Kubiak, the winder. Before this half, the Broncos threatening to get very much back in the contest. A touchdown here, an extra point would make it a 12-10 game. Brad Van Pelt acquired from the Vikings via the Giants. And on that tackle, he's wearing number 91 for the Raiders. Two and a half minutes left before the intermission. The Broncos have not had the kind of running attack today that they showed in the earlier game. Winder had 91 yards himself before he left with an ankle injury. But that's the kind of running ability you saw in that play after the catch that that he has. Second and a long two. Puts Johnson in motion. And wide open is Winder. Bob Nelson just does push him out of bounds at the 12-yard line. It's first down Denver. Eight yards on the play and almost a touchdown. Those are the kind of matchups that you work for. You try and get the, the speedy backs isolated on the big linebackers and get them the football. Winder down the sideline and out of bounds. They are 7-1 because of a defense that has been most alert and very tough, especially inside the 20. They have four turnovers in this first half. They trail 12 to 3, but are only 12 yards from a touchdown that would pull them within two, the safety that started the scoring today. First down with two minutes left in the half. Kubiak for the injured. No way, who has not played. They're a plus two today. That means they're a plus 20 on the year in turnovers. Excellent running by Winder to set up the blocks. Howard took care of Martin, and Brad Van Pelt finally made the stop, but not until Winder had seven yards, and he's almost to the five. Dick, a good running back, sets up the block of the pulling guard. That's Paul Howard, number 60, out in front of Winder. And you see Martin trying to stretch that out. He sets it up finally, allows Howard to go in underneath, and then just jumps over Howard's legs and heads up field. Ends up making a good gain. The ball nosed up almost on the five-yard line. They can get a first down inside the two. Rick Paris is in motion, 24. Winder. No. Right at the five-yard line, a stone wall. Bill Pakel, 71, and Matt Millen, 55, and Rod Martin there to finish him off. Mikel plays a power game. They're on the nose and plowing in and met Winder in the backfield. I think they actually lost a bit on that play. See Elway on the sideline. I'm sure it's eating him up. The young man likes to play the game. Watson way out to the right. Sawyer and Johnson both to the right. Winder in the backfield. Third and three. Six for a touchdown. for Watson, throws back to Winder, but threw behind him. That was a tough chance for Winder. Kubiak mad at himself. Winder expecting that ball to be thrown on his outside shoulder, had to do a 180-degree turn. That is tough. Unable to control the football. 
I think both Kubiak and Winder disappointed they couldn't get that football. At least take a shot then at the first down, maybe even the touchdown. Reeves has got to be patient. He's got to realize that, and I'm sure he does, that Kubiak has just has not had that much of an opportunity to play, and he's going to make that kind of mistakes. An apparent 23-yard field goal try by Carlos. And he roots it through. I asked him about kicking on a day like this when everything was warm and nice. He said, hey, it's tough in the snow. This is no contest. Four recoveries leading to a pair of field goals to cut the Raiders' lead from 12-0 in half. And now Carlos to kick it off. Only 24 seconds left in the first half. Another short kick. This is Clee Montgomery. And he almost had an open row. He had a blocker out in front. Squirek as well. He's to the 41-yard line. Let's go back. We have that RCA camera that really slows down the action. Here's a chance to see an unusual kicker, Carlos, and that soccer style. Here it is in slow motion. Two things to look for. Look how the foot goes under the ball. Now it's the instep, the side of the foot. Look how he's turned that foot down. Not the toes and not the top of the foot. The side of the foot, really. And he controls it so well. A barefooted kicker has one great advantage. They can get the ball very high, very quickly, and over the top of those rushing linemen. No uh, cleats to worry about. Oh, he doesn't catch a cleat when he see goes the, through. You could even see the grass stain on the bottom of his foot. <laughs> now, they've painted, the, they've painted the field. There's not as much grass down there as there looks to be. Well, you had to give it away. <laughs> Well, let's see what the Raiders do with 18 seconds. They're going to take a chance. Oh, look at Wilson all day. And almost throws oh. it into the arms of Busick. Go, 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 Mark! Mark stood back there. Uh, what had to be five seconds. Finally unloaded the football. Busick just about had an interception. And we would have had another turnover this ball game. And I'm sure Wilson is shaking his own head. His, his first start a couple of weeks ago, he threw a couple of bad passes. He said, yeah, those were a couple of doozies. That was another doozy. Doki Williams to the left. Yeah, it looks as if they're in the formation now where they're just going to run out the clock. Tom Flores says, hey, let's not take any chances. And that will be that or will it? Boys will be boys. Henry Lawrence locked up down there. Marty Chavis, I believe, the man who was locked up with him. And uh, with those pleasantries, so ends this first half of the Coliseum in Los Angeles. The score, the Los Angeles Raiders 12, the Denver Broncos 6, NFL 84 coming up after these messages. An open passing game with names like Lance Allworth, Don Maynard, and Fred Boletnikoff. Here's a look back. Lance was, in my opinion, uh, the greatest receiver that I've ever seen or been associated with or watched or anything else. He was a great athlete that, uh, that had the skills, the, the great speed, and he just had the ability to make the big play every week. Assistant Charger coach Al Davis, who will convince Arkansas wide receiver Lance Allworth to sign with the AFL's Chargers. He could dominate the game. He could block. He could catch. He could run with the ball, but he was a great leaper. Very powerful in the lower part of his body. Great uh, jumping ability uh, and uh, tenacity. Allworth will catch at least one pass in 96 consecutive games, a record, and will gain better than 1,000 yards a season for seven straight years. The 1,000 yards probably has meant more to me because it meant I was consistent and that even though I was hurt, uh, I still played, uh, then I was contributing to the team. It was a personal thing, but yet at the same time, it meant something to the team. For his achievements, Allworth will become a Hall of Famer, but his contributions to the AFL will go beyond his Hall of Fame credentials. He was the first AFL player who had never played in another league, who was used by the media, the fan, and the college coach as the standard of excellence at his position. You would go on a college campus and you would say, how about this receiver you have with speed? Who do you compare him to? He said, well, he's not at Allworth. No, they weren't comparing him now to an NFL player. The guy that they all looked to as the top receiver in pro football among the deep threats was a kid in the AFL. 
The New York Jets will showcase their deep threat receiver, Don Maynard. The former NFLer will set a standard for most yards gained receiving in the AFL. And with quarterback Joe Namus spiraling the ball Maynard's way, he will grab the most touchdown passes in AFL history. Don uh, was very conscientious. He had great hands, fine speed. A lot of people uh, said that uh, he didn't like to go over the middle. That really wasn't true. Uh, when uh, the Raiders started their bump and go, he, he drove them crazy because he'd leave them. Joe could lay it out there, and uh, he drove some of their, uh, what they thought was great defensive backs crazy. For the Oakland Raiders, deep threat Fred Belitnikoff will give new meaning to the phrase, sure-handed receiver. Teammate Warren Wells will redefine the word elusive. And in our next edition of the AFL Remembered, we'll have the receiver who is the all-time scoring king. Join us for more of the AFL Remembered on NFL 84. Merlin Olson. Very obvious, Dick, uh, as you glance down the stats, that neither team has really done a lot of running. And that's one of the keys that we laid out early in the ball game, that both teams would try and control the line of scrimmage offensively. The defense is really controlling the game at this point. And if you look down, almost at the end of the stats, you see the turnover number. And it's there that the Raiders and the Broncos really are kind of separated. And it's the Bronco defense that started in this first half. The, the absence of John Elway, you felt that all things considered, if Elway were in there, and I think those last two possessions, fumble recoveries deep in the Raider end, with Elway's threat to throw, it might not be just 12 to 6 Raiders. Dick, I really believe that uh, Dan Reeves uh, is kicking himself and very sorry that his team couldn't capitalize on one of those opportunities. They should have had a touchdown at least on one of those occasions. I believe Elway would have converted on at least one of those shots, and that would have made a big difference in this game. you see any changes in strategy in the second half? Well, obviously, uh, the Broncos want to keep it close. Uh, I'm sure if I were in the Raider locker room, I'd be saying, come on, guys, let's break it loose. We've got a chance here if we get points on the board. And if I were a Bronco defender, I'd say, let's see if we can't score some touchdowns here. They've scored twice in each of the last two games. They've had four TDs in the last two games. Maybe they can do it all on their own. All right, let's look at how the scoring developed in the first half here in the college see him. Kubiak back to pass early in the game and Rod Martin recorded a safety for the Raiders to make it two to nothing. Martin the old pro instrumental again and then it was Marcus Allen deep pattern and Mark Wilson floating the ball deep to Allen a great receiver and that made it nine to nothing Raiders and the Raiders added a field goal by Chris Barr and led 12 to nothing were very much in command in the middle of the second quarter but back came the Broncos. Broncos came back with a pair of field goals to put their points on the board. You see Carlos kicking barefooted at both occasions. Both teams now on the field, ready to go. Chris Barr has it teed up. And deep to return. The Broncos, Zach Thomas, has been the man who has uh, taken all the opportunities thus far. He's the man on the near side. And it's aimed at Thomas again. Oops, they fight over it, and Gene Lang comes up with it. And he is toppled at the 25-yard line just as he was springing into the clear. Otis McKinney with a saving tackle up high on Lang, a rookie. Otis McKinney getting a big shot on him. News out of the locker room that Rulon Jones has a broken bone in his hand. He will play in the second half, but some bad news for the Broncos. Keith Bishop, starting guard, has a strained arch. He will not play. Now that's bad news. Uh, Kenny Lanier already injured, and that means two of five starting interior linemen of the Broncos not in the lineup at this moment. Kubiak starts from his 25, trailing 12 to 6. The toss, and it's Winder. Knocked down at the 29-yard line. Brad Van Pelt, now in his 12th year from Michigan State, and Matt Millen, number 55, made the tackle. Van Pelt acquired from the Vikings for future draft considerations. A great college baseball pitcher at Michigan State. In fact, each of his four years in college, he was drafted by a major league team. I asked him, are you sorry at all that you didn't uh, wander toward major league baseball? He said, maybe the first year or two, but football has really been my home. I love the game, and I'm so pleased that I stayed with this one. He says this is his greatest challenge, fitting in with his Raider team and doing a job for them. Second and five. 
Butch Johnson in motion. They go the other way to Winder. He gets around Alzado. And McElroy has to come over from his safety spot to make the tackle at the 40-yard line. So they start the Broncos by moving the ball on the ground, something that they did not do effectively in the first half. Well, I'm sure both teams will start this second half with much the same kind of thought that they started the game with. They'd still like to get control of the line of scrimmage. And as you mentioned, Dick, uh, neither are able to do that effectively, uh, in particular in the early going for the Broncos. But they have made a good start here of running the ball. Broncos with a 7 and 1 start, one of their best in history. Winder again to the left, inside Alzado this time. And the tackle made at the 44. It'll be second and six. Van McElroy made the stop. Number 26 for the Raiders. His dad, I'm sure, watching Reverend Ted McElroy down in Canipa, Texas. Population. 300. 50 years he's been a reverend there. He started preaching at the age of 15, did Papa McElroy. Well, his son preaches some pretty good defense. He has had 57 tackles, third leading tackler on this Raider team coming into the ball. Very aggressive defensive back. An audible from Kubiak. It's winder up the middle to the 50-yard line and what appears to be a first down before Bob Nelson can make the stop. Bob Nelson on the tackle. You really have to admire what Dan Reeves has done with Denver. Here's a team with more rookies than any club in the entire NFL. They have 15 rookies on the roster as Reeves slowly, not really slowly, is making a complete turnaround in his personnel. And with all that youth, nevertheless, Reeves has his team with only one loss in the first eight. First down from midfield. It's Winder again, and he's getting some blocks now. Well, more yards, a flag is down. Mitchell, I believe, is going to throw a flag on Clarence K, young rookie tight end who is an outstanding blocker. Maybe a little too aggressive in his blocking on that play. You see Hood, there is K right there on the left side of your picture, and Winder getting all kinds of room, and there was the flag coming in at the end of the play. Offense, number 88, holding, first down. Clarence Kay, and what a pick he was. A seventh-round choice by the Broncos from the University of Georgia, where he blocked for Herschel Walker. <laughs> like Steve Watson telling him, come on, you don't have to do that. There's the block on Van, Van Pelt right there. Hands in to Van Pelt. Nothing illegal until right at the end. You saw him grab cloth right at the end. That's what the official tagged him for. I don't know why he did it. The ball carrier was already outside of the thing. From the spot of the foul, it becomes a first and 17 now for the Broncos. They trail 12 to 6. This is Will Height. Not much there at all as Davis came up to help out Van Pelt who is so outstanding against the run. He's 6'5", 235. Many ways he has the configuration of the now-retired Ted Hendricks. Well, they need that kind of stabilizing strength. Most teams put a tight end on that side to their right. And that means that that linebacker must face double teaming, must be able to play the run effectively, and that's been Van Pelt's strength. Second and 15. Whistled dead as Howard Long has another sack, the fourth for the Raiders today. We mentioned the entry to Kenny Lanier, the fact that he would not be able to go full time today, replaced in the lineup by Winfred Hood, and Howie just using his upper body strength to throw him aside. Winford trying to get in on his heels, but Kubiak uh, going down. Look at the power move here again. How Long just literally throws number 74 away. He's got the speed and the strength. Long at 6'5 and 270. You know what I like, too? A big, tough lineman. But the first thing he'll always do is credit his grandma, Elizabeth Mullen, who's raised him since age 11. Kubiak has a man open, but unable to hang on is K, the tight end. Ball thrown slightly behind Clarence K. 
Okay, trying to adjust to it. Couldn't hang on. And the Broncos, after a very powerful start running the ball, get in trouble after the penalty. And again, a rookie mistake by Kay. But you've got to give a young man credit. He's out there doing everything he can and perhaps just a little too zealous in his blocking on that play. Well, the Raiders were very high in praise of Kay's performance in the first game at Denver. They said he just blew us all over the field. Some of them were a little hostile to him in that ball game. There, he was at the center of a couple of those fights on the field. Boy, Harmon and Lester Hayes almost had a block punt. And another muff by Pruitt. 25-30. And ducks out of bounds. Safety at the 32. Lester Hayes is really talking to himself. He's coming off the field. He's doing a whole solo performance. He's got first act. He's doing the intermission. And now into an aria. He thought he had that one for sure. I think he can't figure out where that ball went. And we welcome you back to the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Dick Kinberg with Merlin Olson. The top two teams in the AFC West. Both with seven and one records. In this duel, the Raiders lead 12 to 6, their first possession of the second half. They start from the 32 with a reverse, a fake reverse, and Allen keeps the ball and gets about uh, three yards. Let's see where they spot it. No, not even that good. Only a yard as Mike Harden not fooled on the play at all. The right corner for the Broncos. Like if they'd have given the ball off on the reverse, they'd have made some yardage on that one. A very quick defense. In fact, if you talking to Mark Wilson, I asked him about the Denver defense. He said quickness and aggressiveness, the two things you notice here. The fake right there to Dopey Williams. The defense just kept coming. I don't think they really saw that fake very well. Wilson on second and nine. Fumble. No, no they're going to say he was in the grasp. No fumble. Oh, there's a most important whistle. Andre Townsend, number 61, carried the ball into the end zone. It looked like as Mark Wilson started forward with his hand, the ball simply came loose. Now, if he stops and then loses the ball, it would be a fumble. If the ball comes loose in the forward motion, and Reeves obviously feeling it was a fumble. Dan Reeves, 40 years of age. Here's a chance for you to see it. The arm definitely starting forward. Yep. Oh. Right. I'd have to agree, Dick. It looked like he was trying to stop the arm, but it was hit. The ball came loose. I, I think he was going forward on a pass. Oh, Reeves is burning. The Raiders maintain possession. Incomplete is the call. Third down. A long eight. Wilson over the middle. Complete to Barnwell. And he has a first down at the 45-yard line. Now the Broncos apparently had the football. But the whistle in favor of the Raiders, and now they have a first down at the 45. Reeves still angry, of course. I don't. That would have been an extremely big play for these Broncos. Chance for them to jump out in front of this ball game. You decide for yourselves. I think he was starting to pump fake, and he tried to pull it back, and it just slipped out of his hands. But of course, we have the luxury of looking at it in slow motion, and after the fact. Incomplete. Right through the arms and a flag is down. Kenny King, the intended receiver. Jackson coming in, I believe. Held by Charlie Hanna, number 73, who folded out of the, deep, of the offensive line to pick him up on the blitz. Brother John Hanna, the New England Patriots. Offense, number 73, holding. <laughs> he doesn't believe First it. First down. Look at number 57, Jackson. Hanna, as the option blocker, out quickly to pick him up. And you see the hands going wide, and you see his shirt being pulled there. The official looking from the side, and there's no question who he was looking at. That didn't look to me as, to be as much of a holding as we see on almost any number of plays, Nick. First down, 20 from the 35. had good time all day and it's caught by Barnwell out of bounds at the 46 of Denver Tom Jackson made the defensive play 
19 yards for Wilson to Barnwell, who is really developing as an outstanding receiver. More pressure on him today because of the absence of Cliff Branch. But you see a very interesting thing developing here. And you said it, uh, Wilson has had a great deal of time. Now, when you are when you have 30, what, 34 sacks on the year after the four in the first half here, you wouldn't think he would have that much time to throw. But Wilson rolling, he has good mobility. Rolling to the outside, got a lot of extra time on that play. Second and one. First down yard, it's just Kenny King plows for a couple. He only needed one. Rulon Jones back in the lineup, number 75, in on that tackle. We mentioned that Rulon is playing with a broken hand. Very quick to react, as you'll see him at the lower edge. Well, you see him right in the middle of your picture. Look how quickly he got off the block on that play. 79, Bruce Davis, the blocker. Rulon stood up the blocker and slid inside to get a good piece of that tackle. But it's enough for the first down, first and 10. To six to score, nine minutes left, third quarter. Wilson to Christensen, the tight end down at the 35, a gain of nine. Rick Dennison from Colorado State, 55, his number, made the tackle. Here's a free agent pick in 1982, an academic All-American at Colorado State, and has developed very quickly into an outstanding linebacker. Cliff Branch, ball cap on today. He has a groin pull, will not play. Tom Flores doesn't want to take any chances on the veteran receiver with 497 career catches. Allen diving forward for short yardage, a couple to the 33-yard line, and Dennison in on the hit again. Neither defense as effective in slowing down these offenses here in the first series or two of the second half. Marcus getting the first down as he dove across. Look, <laughs> I think he took a pretty good lick in there. And this is a very physical game, and that's something else we should point out. The Raiders, a bigger, stronger team on up. the physical side that could pay dividends later in this game for them. Wilson threw that one away. Greg Pruitt in for Marcus Allen was the closest black jersey. Tom Jackson, excellent coverage. And there's Jackson's value. We've seen him in the backfield pressuring the quarterback. We've seen him in the midst of fumble recoveries. And he also has the quickness to stay with the back coming out of the backfield. Ball, I think, thrown away because of the safety blitz, though, Dick. Uh, Jackson did have his man covered. But uh, the blitz coming, I believe it was Dennis Smith flying in from the outside. And Mark Wilson just unloaded the ball out of bounds. This is the ninth play of the drive, second down 10. Blitz, and wide open is Christensen. He breaks the tackle of Foley, and he's to the 13-yard line. Ball is dead. He lost the football after he hit the ground. The danger of blitzing a quarterback, throwing all your people into the rush, is simply not getting to him in time. Wilson able to read it. I think that Todd Christensen read the blitz as well, made a quick move to the outside, got the football, got the first down. He's down just inside the 14-yard line, and the Raiders are threatening here in the third quarter. Christensen now with 45 catches on the year. Kellen Winslow leading with 55, but of course his year is over. Frank Hawkins could not get outside. Rulon Jones and Dennison to shut him off. Rulon Jones, 75. Well, there was a 75 Jones who played for many years here with the Rams, a Hall of Famer, and he was right next to you. He certainly was. Patrolled the turf pretty well here in the Coliseum. Secretary of Defense, Deacon Jones. And Rulon Jones, of course, uh, from a school that's turned out a few good uh, defensive linemen, Utah State. Who else came out of there? <laughs> Second and 11 from the 14. Wilson drills it, complete to the two-yard line to Doki Williams. Now, Wilson has been floating and feathering the ball very well. That's about as uh, sharp a gun as he's shown us in the last two games. He has a very strong arm. He'll demonstrate that here. Put this one on a string. Hmm. And Williams absorbing quite a 
contact as he goes to the two-yard line. First and goal. He's a tough little receiver. He'll show you his toughness on those kick returns. This is where the Broncos are tough. One of the best goal line defenses in the league. Marcus Allen gets about a half yard at best. Mike Harden, 31, the final support, but Busick, Chavis, as they unfile. I want to talk about Jackson. You see him there in the foreground, 57 Jackson. I mean, his intense dislike for the Raiders goes way back. Remember the years when John Madden was the coach of the Raiders? He used to keep a picture of Madden in his shoe just to remind him how much he disliked the black and silver. defeated Indianapolis 16 to 7 the Bears win they now have a three game lead Atlanta loses at Pittsburgh 35 to 10 Philadelphia loses at home St. Louis 34 14 second and eight Kubiak at the 34-yard line. Lester Hayes makes the stop on Butch Johnson. Five yards on the play. The rest of the finals, Kansas City, 24, Tampa Bay, 20. 31 to 13, Cincinnati. Still only two games behind Pittsburgh in the Central Division. Houston still winless. Detroit bombed by Green Bay, 41 to 9. Packers break that losing streak. New Orleans in a final second, 53-yard field goal, 16-14 at Cleveland. 19-0, 49ers lead at Anaheim against the Rams, third quarter. Also third quarter, Miami now 24-0 over Buffalo at the Orange Bowl. At the half, the Giants leading Washington 23-3. You're up to date. Here it's 19-6. And a third down four for Kubiak. Gives to Wilhite. And Wilhite is close to a first down. He's very close. A little, uh, look, look like a draw play almost. Out of that shotgun as Wilhite came in. They made the forward handoff to him. Will Height getting up close. They'll measure it as they'll, I believe they'll measure it anyway. Yes, they will. Here's a chance to see it at home. A little forward handoff, a little razzle-dazzle, like everyone expecting the passing play. 
crossed him up on that one. You know, that's a play, you'll remember, trying to defense it, that Dan Reeves used to run with the Cowboys, that little shovel pass. Well, it's, it, that one was a shovel handoff. You're right, it is, it is a shovel pass that he throws it up, but he handed that one off. Martin, uh, apparently with a slight thigh injury, may not return to the game. That means we'll see other <laughs> linebackers on that right-hand side. Looks like they've got Jeff Barnes, 56, over there right now. It has a first down at the 36-yard line. Winder. Good move by Winder. He's to the 45-yard line. Pick up of eight more. Van McElroy with a tackle. Dan Reeves very quick to try and take advantage of the fact that Martin not on his normal position at right linebacker Jeff Barnes over there who usually plays on the left hand side and they're out there putting pressure on Barnes Winder doing a good job of cutting back and that's something he did most effectively in the first game that they had up in Denver less than three minutes remaining in the third quarter the Raiders leading 19 to 6. Winder again. Look out. Stop right at the yardsticks. He needed two for a first down. Lyle Alzado, Jeff Barnes, Bob Nelson all in on the tackle. He's going to be very close to the first down. Again, they're going to measure it. 49ers now open a 26 to nothing lead against the Rams. Well, that was a big game because the 49ers starting today 7 and 1 with a two game lead over the Rams. Rams could cut it to just one game instead. It looks like the 49ers will have a three game edge. Now that game like this game, a game within the division. Al Davis talked about the there you see the first down being marked off and Broncos starting to move the ball here. But this game so important to both teams because not only does it aff affect their one loss record but it is within their division and that is the crucial measure when it comes to to deciding who will go to the playoffs and if there is a tie. Reeves who got the Broncos into the playoffs as a wild card a nine and seven record last year. Lost then to Seattle. First down at the 47. Whoops. And a flag down as they scramble for the mistake on the exchange. Well, that's interesting. The defenders can get back. If they jump, they can get back if they haven't touched someone. You see the movement here. That ball actually fumbled. I think the ball snap starts. a little early. Offense number 74. First down. Winford Hood, who's in there in place of Kenny Lanier, trying to get up a little quick into Howie's Howie Long's face. But off times a center who sees movement down the line will go ahead and snap the ball. If the quarterback is used to that, that's not a problem. Looked like he snapped it before Kubiak was ready on that play, trying to catch the defender offside. Instead, trapped his own offensive line. You see Willie Brown on the sidelines with Tom Flores. Brown hitting a bit by Earl Leggett. Brown received his Hall of Fame ring as part of the pregame ceremonies. Uh, interesting, he started his career with the Broncos and finished with the Raiders, and one of the great defensive backs in this league's history. Winder. Otis McKinney made the initial contact. McKinney, the fifth defensive back. And down goes Winder shy of the 45. Fakel was also in on the play. You can't take anything away from the effort being exerted by that young man today. 75 yards, and that surprises me. He's made a lot of that yardage here in the second half. Looks like Fakel shaken up as he heads for the sideline at the help of Howie Long and Otis McKinney. Doesn't want to go out, but he's woozy. <laughs> Matt Millen says, get him out of here. <laughs> he said, look, don't stay in here and mess up on a play. I, very often, defenders shaken up don't want to leave the field. Shaken up on the play. George Anderson, the trainer, goes out. He's got some smelling salts. Trying. Of course, once you've stopped play for a player, he must leave the field for at least a single play. So while he takes the mandatory eight count, we'll have a timeout. The score here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, the Raiders 19, the Broncos 6. 49 who didn't use their tickets. Actually, 92,469 tickets were sold, 91,020 in attendance, the largest crowd in the NFL this year, and the largest amount of revenue for a game other than a Super Bowl or a playoff in NFL history. Second down and 12. Kubiak. Good throw to 
Butch Johnson and out of bounds with a first down at the Raider 42 yard line 14 yards on the throw. We watched the Broncos get burned on the blitz. Watch the Raiders get burned on the blitz. Inside Matt Millen had a shot right there. Couldn't get there in time to interrupt the play. And Kubiak did a good job. That's put some power on that pass. Butch Johnson, I think that's his first of the day, isn't it, Dick? Second, Second of the hit. day. He had a short one earlier. Yeah. Four yards catch. That was a big first down. Clock ticking away. 114. Left in the third quarter. Kubiak, lots of time. And no catch as Kay was drilled by Bob Nelson, a veteran linebacker from Nebraska. Actually sandwiched. Broken up by Bob Matt Nelson. Millen also part of that sandwich as they whacked him good as he caught the ball. Timing just a little off on that play. And you really can feel how much this Bronco offense misses John Elway. They've adjusted to his style. They've adjusted to that gun of an arm. And talking to the Raider defenders, they said, you know, we've never seen a quarterback since 77 throw a stop pattern where the receiver just comes down and stops. The last one they had to do that was Burt Jones. Elway can throw that pattern. It can cause you trouble in the process. Second and ten. Raiders with their extra defensive back. Winder, what a job he did. He lost his balance, was covered by several Raiders and was able to use that free hand for balance and dart forward for good yardage. Otis McKinney finally stopped him after a six yard gain. That's 81 yards now for Winder. Just an excellent all out effort by Sammy Winder. Footing a little treacherous down there. That's sandy. That's painted dirt down in there. Winder keeping his balance, maintaining that forward movement. Got his shoulders squared to the line of scrimmage. Got good yardage, but they've still got a tough down here with about third and four, Dick. When he runs laterally, were you the one that said that's a sidewinder? Or was, no, that's <laughs> no, I else. didn't say that. <laughs> Sammy, sidewinder. Kubiak's pressure now. Oh, he's going to run it or not. Now he's throwing, and that's Watson that's open. No, Johnson, Butch Johnson on the far sideline in the first down at the 22. Well covered, but a good throw by Kubiak. You saw Johnson pointing at his quarterback. Hey, that's the way I like him. Razzle dazzle. They faked that little reverse going back the other way out of the shotgun. Actually able to get a little extra time for Kubiak. He rifled the ball into Johnson's hands. A very impressive drive by the Broncos as the third quarter comes to a close. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Back to standard time. The shadows starting to grow as the Broncos work toward the closed end, the western end of the Coliseum in Los Angeles. It's been a most impressive drive engineered by Kubiak and a first down at the Raider 22. Los Angeles leads in the game score 19 to 6. Winder breaks loose of the tackle by Millen. Oh! Pretty run. Still on his feet and diving. They say he stepped out of bounds back at the nine-yard line. It'll be a first down, and Winder did most of that on his own. When things get tough, you need to have people step forward with great performance. Sammy Winder has done that here on this drive, breaking loose right there. A good block on the inside. Looked like 63. Oh, there he was, just barely stepping out of bounds on that play. But Howard Long showing you his speed. He actually chased down the desire to chase down Winder, who is nearing a 100-yard day. First and goal at the nine for Denver. Winder again. Not this time. He's unable to get away from 26 Van McElroy, one of the better open field tacklers in the league. That was just an excellent tackle by McElroy. Winder showing very quick change of direction on a couple of plays there. Good blocking by the Denver line. And we've mentioned to you that they're operating without two starters in there. Lanier is out. Bishop is out. We've got 63 Mark Cooper in there. And Woodford Hood, 74. And they're doing a pretty darn good job for young men who have not had that much playing time. 79 yards rushing for the Broncos. 61 for the Raiders. We'll get back to that. Second and goal. Winder to the four. 
I'm going to go back to the fact that in their six straight wins, the Broncos have not allowed an opposing team to rush for as much as 100 yards. And so far, they've checked the Raiders well under that century mark. And meanwhile, they are running the ball more effectively, especially in the second half. They certainly are. You mentioned how much Elway would like to be in this game, but Kubiak showing some real style and class on this drive. Let's give him his due. You bet. 99 yards now for Winder. A big play for Dan Reeves' Denver team. It's third and goal at the Raider four. And they need the seven here. They need the seven points here. They may not get that many chances here in the second half. Kubiak on the play action fake. He likes to run. Now he throws wide open. Touchdown, Clarence Key. Davis complaining to the official that he was interfered with as a defender. Clarence Kay sensing that his quarterback was in trouble, finding some openings in the secondary, and the ball delivered. And that's that's the touchdown that Dan Reeves has been looking for. That puts him up tight now. 12 to 19, a chance to go 19-13, and one play away from going ahead in this ball game. Kubiak's threat to run, to to drew in the defense, and then he spotted K wide open for the easy score. Clarence K, that's his third touchdown of the year. Whoops, bad snap from center. Oh, no. It'll be intercepted by Jeff Barnes. Now, there's a rule I'd like to see uh, football an act, and that is that on an extra point try, if you should intercept it, go for it the other way, you ought to get the point yourself. If you can manufacture the play, why not get the point to the defense? Absolutely, but what a crucial point. With that extra point, they would have had a chance to go ahead with a touchdown. Now they could tie only with a touchdown, Dick. Seventy-three yards, fourteen plays, consuming over six and a half minutes. Clarence Kay's first catch of the game, a four-yard touchdown from Kubiak, and it's after the missed extra point, 19 to 12. We'll get to that extra point right after this kickoff goes out of bounds to the five-yard penalty. The Broncos were working in that injury earlier to one of the offensive linemen, also took away their snapper. Keith Bishop usually snaps in there on the uh, extra points and field goals. Of course, he's on the sideline. I, be I believe it's Billy Bryant that's been forced into service there, but anytime you interrupt that timing, you have a problem. But fortunately, uh, only a seven point deficit, and uh, Dan Reeves and Bronco offense and the Bronco defense Thanks, know that if they get one more touchdown, they can they can get back into this ball game and tie it up. Carlos has not kicked well, has not kicked it off well today. He's kicked well in, in field goal and extra point situations when he's had a chance to kick, but he has not kicked the ball off well on on the kickoffs. That ball, of course, going out of bounds. And you gotta wonder how much the altitude in Denver helps these kickers. Oh, he was kicking them right out of the he end zone. He rooted them out of the end zone. You couldn't believe what he was doing. And of course. Today, uh, the Raiders able to get some great field position on the returns. Now 19 to 12 the score. This one is hit well, and Williams has to go to the one. So that was a good kick. Williams reversing and now in trouble and down at the 14-yard line. Mecklenburg 77 and Wilson 45 with a tackle. So with 12:59 remaining in this game, the score Raiders 19, Broncos 12. The 14 yard line with a seven point lead. Plenty of time, 13 minutes left. Miami has scored again 31 0. They lead Buffalo. Marcus Allen. He pulls his way for about four to the 18 yard line. Let's go back to the kickoff coverage and Ricky Hundley, number 98, the newest member of the Broncos. He is a big horse. And look how quickly he accelerates here. Has great speed, good nose for the football, gets off the block, <laughs> unloads on Derek Jensen, 31. Not there to make a part of that play, but certainly he is going to be a factor. They're very excited about getting him into the lineup. And yeah, what that illustrates is how a 240 pounder can move. You bet. They're really excited about him. Ooh, very nearly a loose football is diving in on Frank Hawkins was the pressure from Lewis Wright and Steve Busick. Right I'm sure that one of the things that Tom Flores has said is hang on to that football. They're going to be popping at it. 
This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Raiders and the National Football League is prohibited. Third down, two. Raiders ball at their 22. Both Wilson and Kubiak are 13 for 22. The passing dead even in terms of percentage. They don't pass this time. That's Marcus outside. And the first down at the 28. And that's just the quick football intellect. He saw that where the play was designed to go, no hope. He quickly adjusted and picks up the yard at six. It looks like Jackson coming hard from the outside as we get in close to the action. Watch Marcus adjust. The play was designed to go inside. It was shut off there. He just used his speed to get outside and pick up that first down. Both Barnwell and Williams are to the right. Stay on the ground. Hawkins again, bowling straight ahead to the 32 for about four. Walt Boyer. In on the tackle, you see the Giants 30, Washington 6 in the third quarter. Oh, what an upset that. That's going to make a lot of people in New York happy and a lot of people in Washington very unhappy. Dick, one of the things we'll see here, if the Raiders can do it, they would love to take that football all the way the length of the field, running the football and eating the clock. Injury on the play to the rookie or the second-year man, Boyer, so we'll use this timeout. Okay, left the field uh, limping a bit, but under his own power. See a lot of bodies in the game for the Broncos. They feel they've got to rotate their people and keep them fresh against this bigger Raider team. Second down, short seven. Blitz. Wilson incomplete through the hands of Christensen. How is this Denver team different from the one that, uh, that beat the Raiders a month ago? Well, I think if you talk to them, they would tell you that that was really the turning point of the season. They didn't know how they stood. They, th that was a test for them. That really was a test. And they had, they had won a couple of games that people said they shouldn't have won. But I think they kind of proved something to themselves in that game. They came into this game a much more confident football team, even with their injuries. And they have played well behind Reeves today. I think he's got to be very proud of them, no matter what happens in this game, Dick. Yeah, he seems to be... He claims yesterday he's not mellowing, but he does seem to be much more secure and feeling uh, more confident about his role on the sidelines. He's wearing the stripes a lot more comfortably these days. Draw play to Allen, trying to get outside. But it's not there, and he's down short of the first down at the 37, so the Broncos are going to get the football. So the Raiders, somewhat conservative, staying on the ground, and the Broncos are about to receive Ray Guy's punt. This will be the first punt of the game by Guy. Make that his second. He did have one very early in the game. Tom Flores would much rather have obviously seen a first down there, let his team keep the football. I wonder here uh, if maybe Denver might not gamble and go after this punt. One man back, Zach Thomas at the 17. Now it appears that it's a return. by Thomas and it's recovered by Otis McKinney it'll be the Raiders ball at the eight yard line if it was touched I believe it was touched that's what the two officials are talking about well, wait a minute now now the official has signal it's Denver's ball maybe it didn't touch him the Raiders thought it did it looked from this angle, but we're uh, over in El Monte, so it's we're a long to... ways away from the field. If the ball touches the receiver, it's live. Cannot be advanced, but can be recovered. We've seen that happen earlier in this game. There's the call by the official. See, Tony Caldwell certainly does not agree. Well, we've had him go both ways today, Dick. And maybe this was one that, uh, that balances out on the day. That's right. Well, on the Raiders' drive, which was now, which is now the leading score in the game, it appeared that the Broncos had a fumble recovery in about the same spot. <laughs> we'll check that replay to see if we can find anything for you. But first, we'll pause. He doesn't have the privilege of seeing this replay. I watch the ball. It appears to touch Zach Thomas and go into the air. We can't tell that for sure. But look how Zach goes after the ball. 
McKinney got there first. I think that's the tip. I think he either thought he did touch it or knew he touched that ball because he was going after it. Had he not touched the ball, he would have just faded out he of the He could have stayed away from it and just let it roll free and let it be down wherever it was. Well, the fans here will let you know how they feel about it. It's a 55-yard punt. Denver gets it at the 8-yard line. Trailing 19 to 12. Winder. He's over the 100-yard mark as he gets out to the 12-yard line and into the embrace of Howard Long. Let's go back and take one more peek. Now, we've examined a couple of breaks that have fallen to the Raiders' side of the field today. This would appear to be one that's gone the Broncos' direction. The ball bounces up. Let's see if it does change direction. Looks like it, well, we can't see from this angle, but it would definitely appear to me by the action of the receiver right there, Zach Thomas, that he felt that he had to get back to that ball. 104 yards now for Winder, the third year back out of Southern Mississippi. Oh, what a game he's had. And he gets the ball again. Down he goes. The play by Lester Hayes. He'll make that Mike Davis. Mike Davis, 36. The strong safety. There is the official well, who was asked to call that, and he is shielded by Thomas's body on that play. He's the man who has to call it. I can see why it would be difficult. And we have a Raider down on the field. George Anderson, their trainer, out quickly. Matt, Matt Mellon, Mellon, I believe. It's a 50, let's go. wait to be sure here. Uh, that body can only yes. belong to one guy. <laughs> now, he wears one of those old V-neck T-shirts that looks like it's about 20 years old. But he's an important cog in this Raider defense. So you're certainly hopeful that he is not doing badly. Especially important against the run, and that's Denver's long suit, especially with Elway on the sidelines. Well, you remember, too, that Martin is already out of this game, so that's a pair of those Raider linebackers out of the ball game, and that you can't even the even the Raiders can't dip down too far before they run into a little bit of a problem defensively. Third down between eight and nine at the ten yard line. Kubiak fading into his own end zone. Just does elude one man. And it's caught. <laughs> it's caught, but short of a first down by Watson. He is amazing. What concentration. Like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat. That ball bounced out of the hands of one of the other receivers. Kubiak not getting up. Kubiak leveled on that play. Steve Angelopoulos, the trainer, out quickly. We'll give you a look at the whole play. Kubiak avoiding the rush and a possible sack. Howie Long from the backside. It's Al Zato that finally buried him. But watch the ball here. Up out of the hands of Kay. Now look, one, two, three bounces. And finally, on the fourth bounce, controlled by Watson. Watson's gallant reception, however, short of a first down. The Broncos will be punting when we return. Be okay. Perhaps just the wind knocked out of him, but just in case. Well, it's not Elway warming up, just pacing the sidelines. It's rookie free agent Scott Stenkavage from North Carolina tuning up. Well, right now, the defense is going to have to tune up. It'll be their job to get the football back. Chris Norman. Whoa, a high yes. snap. And he gets it away. Oh, that's a terrific effort. And the ball down at the 49 in Denver Territory. Again, the absence of Keith Bishop, great deep snapper, and they were lucky that they didn't have another safety on their hands. 36 yards by Norman, but he did a terrific job just in handling the football and getting the kick away under pressure. Now Mark Wilson and the Raider offense comes on the field. Let's go back to the play. We have another angle for you to peruse. A second official, left side of your screen. He, too, had a view of the play and did not call a touch. Well, <laughs> they both had an end. Yeah. Certainly the man on the sidelines had a pretty good look at it. Certainly did. First down, Raiders. And Wilson going to throw him first down. To Marcus Allen. A hard-earned five yards into the grasp of Dennis Smith. Now, low-risk pass. 
that's really almost the equivalent of a long handoff to Marcus Allen has the advantage if once Allen catches the ball of putting him in the secondary and letting him work on them. Let's play a little football trivia here from the Coliseum. What player holds the Raider record for most yards passing in a game? Plunkett, Stabler, LaMonica, Flores, Blanda, what's your guess? Well, let's go down the line. Plunkett? No, Stabler? Well, they're all no. Kenny King says yes and drives to the 35-yard line. And a first down. We'll let you think about that trivia question for a few moments. Well, those are all no's. I'm going to give that. They're all no's. Okay, those well, are all I would, I, we, we missed this one yesterday. <laughs> we sure did. We I guess those. I didn't have, I, in fact, I used quite a few of those names uh, yesterday. <laughs> you know, I'm, not, I'm not cotton to a lot of those long questions anyway. Now, somebody got that one, I know. <laughs> Montana <laughs> to Clark, 44 yards, and the 49ers lead the Rams 33 to nothing at Anaheim. Oh, Rams get shelled. This game still in doubt. Raiders by just a touchdown. Oh, fine reception by Greg Pruitt. As he was losing his footing, the veteran Pruitt gains four. A lot of sand on this field. I mentioned that the turf torn up quite a bit. Uh, SC played Cal on this turf yesterday, and they really ripped it up. Pruitt did a good job. His feet popped right out from underneath him. Kept his concentration on the football. And a good lesson in that of your receiver. That's where the concentration has to be on that football and complete. Clock running 548 remaining in the game. Marcus Allen back in as Pruitt goes out. This is Frank Hawkins right into the arms of Steve Busick. Well, that Busick, just a seventh round pick in 81, replacing Randy Gratishar. And he has been an outstanding player, especially against the run. Both inside linebackers, Music and Dennison, have played extremely well. In fact, that whole linebacking core, the three youngsters, Ryan, of course, has been there in place of Swenson, who has been injured and out for the entire year. Dan Reeves, I'm sure, along with Joe Collier, who's the defensive coordinator for this Denver defense, very proud of the way those linebackers have been playing. But they need a big play here on third down. And a long four. And he doesn't get the first down. In fact, he doesn't get a yard. Rulon Jones and Tom Jocks of Jackson were waiting. And in comes Chris Barr. The Raiders will try a long field goal. This will be a pretty good test of Barr's leg. 47 yards. His longest this year, 50. But this would be the second longest for him if he's successful. He's had some misses from shorter distances. Uh, but did pop one for one outside of the 40-yard line. And as you said, a 50-yarder, he can hit it that far. David Hamu ran for a first down on a fake field goal early in the game. He holds. Barr misses wide to the right. And it was short as well. Did not hit the ball well, Dick. 47-yard miss by Barr that keeps the Broncos within a touchdown and is 419 left. I mean, you see, he knew the second he hit that football, a kicker usually knows, well, and that, that could have put it away. Now they're still just seven points ahead of the Broncos. The defense has done its job, got the football back, and now let's see who's in there at quarterback, Dick. Kubiak, Kubiak's back in. field of the 35 yard line so there's just the uh, four minutes remaining a little more than four and for the Broncos they're, they're, saying, a fumble. Football. they're saying that Winder fumbled I didn't see the ball spring free I saw the yelling and screaming going on Jeff Barnes who's been in there in place of, of Rod Martin at that right linebacking position came out of that stack with the football I think Long did a pickpocket job I think maybe they stole that when they hijacked that football Here's Winder heading upfield, cutting back against the grain. That's Squarick, 58 there. The ball loose. Yes, the ball loose early and a whole stack of bodies. We didn't see the fumble from here, but Jeff Barnes did and came up with the football. So the Raiders get it back. Winder is starting to lose it there. You can see, and it just Squarick. Squarick got his elbow, I believe, Dick. 
it's at the 34 yard line the Raiders with 406 so Winder who may be the fatigue factor you talked about that Merlin has been used so often the Broncos who are number one in the league enforcing and accepting the turnovers and they're four to three a plus one today and a plus 19 on the year they'll be going for the football a great disappointment though you feel like you've got yourself at least a chance to get back into this ball game and then a guy who's played so well on the day and worked so hard for you and you credit that's a forced error that's not a mistake that's a forced error good job by Jack Squaring a strong linebacker just reaching in and ripping at that arm and Making uh, making Winder cop it up. Second and eight. Out of the backfield, Marcus Allen, and then diving to the 21-yard line. It's almost as if Allen has an extra set of eyes. He knew there was someone about to make the tackle from the blind side and had the presence to pause, cut back inside. Really, a sense of of what's happening, and I think there are athletes who can feel what is going on around them. Athletes who don't have that sense, very often injured on that kind of play. And Marcus uh, is one of those people, it's very hard to get a, a full shot on him. He always seems to get the glancing blow. Two touchdowns today to give him 12 for the year, leading the NFL. And Wilson alertly letting that 30 second clock run down. First down, Hawkins, they're tackling the football, Jackson and company. 235. We'll see if the Broncos start to use some timeouts. Apparently not. Winding down. They will. Yes. Well, there it is. They should have called it earlier. I, they they could have forced one more play and then called the timeout just before the two-minute clock. Yeah, you see Reeves. He's unhappy. He wanted he wanted it called instantly. That's Merle. still running. He he, uh, he wants a, a timeout. I think it's been called. I think they're going to have to check with the uh, officials. It's called at 2.31. We'll see whether or not they uh, give him those nine seconds back. Gives us a chance. Quick updates. New York has scored again. They lead 37 to 6 over Washington. And Miami rolling 38 to nothing over Buffalo. A reminder next Sunday. We have perhaps our most attractive. This is one we ought to put in the neon lights out on the marquee. Look at the doubleheader. The first game, the Raiders against the Bears in Chicago. Peyton and Allen and all the star value of that game. That uh, two first place teams, or maybe not. The Raiders not there yet. Houston will be at Pittsburgh. Cleveland in Buffalo. And San Diego, the Colts. Those are the early games. Merlin and I will be at Soldier Field. Then the second game, Miami will be 9-0, visiting the Jets 6-3 in New York. Kansas City at Seattle, a very important game in the AFC West. New England, they rallied today under their new coach, the Hall of Famer Raymond Barry. In our 6-3, they'll be at Denver in a critical game, and Cincinnati will play San Francisco. Those are all games on NBC next week, so pull up a chair and... Uh, and have a full afternoon with us. 2.29, they moved it back. They did add some seconds to the clock, not as many as Reeves would have liked. That's Joe Collier in the orange hat. They're standing next to Reeves, the defensive coordinator, the man who calls the signals for the Orange Crush defense. And what a year he's done. One of the one of five original AFL coaches still active in the league, has always been with AFC teams. He's the only one that, that has got that record. But 16 years as a Bronco defensive coach and a coordinator that has the respect of defensive people and offensive people all throughout the league. I know you're very fond of them. Second down and seven. Trying to get outside. And staying in bounds. Alert running. Steve Foley finally brings Kenny King down, but there would have been a younger back. Might have been tempted to roam a little too far wide and be tackled out of bounds. King stayed in bounds and forces Denver to use its second timeout. Kenny King came into this game with the best rushing average among all Raider backs, 4.4 yards per carry. And showed you some of his strength as well as his speed. Plus, a holding penalty has been called against the Raiders, and that may move them out of field goal range. Now, that's... That's the kind of thing that just give you nightmares on the sideline if you're a coach. You have what appears to be a offense number 32. Illegal Marcus use Allen. of the hand. Marcus Allen. Second That's down. Most unusual. Almost a clinching first down. And now you've moved 10 yards back and you've got to do it all over again. Plus you say the Denver Broncos a timeout. Absolutely. <laughs> Marcus coming into your screen at the top. One-on-one -on, -one on Louis Wright. 
Cornerback coming up to force. Louie trying to push him away. Let's see if Marcus, well, you see Louie's shirt getting a little, that's, it looked like holding, maybe a block on the back of, uh, maybe almost an illegal block on Louie's back. Here comes out. There's the ball, and the Broncos are going to get it at the 15-yard line. That's just what Denver was looking for. Rulon Jones recovers the football. A vicious hit on Allen, who was sprinting into that secondary. And Denver with 2.16 left with a chance. The two Broncos at the bottom of that stack are Ken Woodard, 52, and Reuben Carter, 68. Let's see who it was that shook it loose. There's Woodard right there. Dennis Smith, there it is. Dennis Smith, 49, stepping in and ripping that ball loose, going after the football. Right, right play, and Marcus quickly off the field, obviously frustrated. But they're a long ways away, Dick. Woof. Second fumble today by Allen, 216 left for the Broncos. The score is 19 to 12. Denver showing why they are legitimate co-holders of first place in the West. This is Gerald Wilhite chewing up big yardage. He's out to the 30 to 34 yard line before Mike Davis can trip him up. 204 and the two minute timeout will give the Broncos a chance to huddle. The Raiders the same. Well, fantastic finish. That's what we have at the two minute timeout. We may have one right here in the Coliseum. Let's flash back at another. That's not just by accident that the Broncos now with a plus two today and are a plus 20 for the year. You saw Dennis Smith had the you tackle being made. He had his hand in there ripping the ball away. They've been the best in the league at taking advantage and now have an opportunity to tie. 19 to 12 to score. Two minutes remaining. Two timeouts left for Denver. First down at the 35. Kubiak in trouble. And it's an incomplete pass and they certainly were liberal about being in the grasp there, Kubiak was struggling, extricated himself. I think the only guy out there was Dave Stutter, number 70, a big tackle. But I think what they decided was that Kubiak may have been drilled as he threw the ball. Laura is asking the question along with Bob Siemens, as the man who calls the defenses for the Raiders. We saw him directly behind Flores. Let's see Kubiak trying to avoid the rush. Alzado is in there. Long is in there. He's stepping forward. Now he never was in the grasp. And Jeff, control. Jeff Barnes, I think the guy that hit him just as he threw the football. Complete. And Sawyer is out of bounds at the 49 of Denver. With 147 left, the Broncos, they, many people felt this young team after winning it in Denver, they come back down here. This big crowd might be intimidated. The Raiders, the Super Bowl champions, without their top quarterback, John Elway, they have measured up very well today. Uh, the Denver fans, uh, they've got themselves a club. Well, they've got to be very proud of the way the Broncos have played today, as I'm sure Reeves is, but it's, they still got some turf to cover here. Will Hyde, the setback. Will Hyde at the 50. Can he get out of bounds? Yes, he does. At the 46-yard line, that stops the clock. Squirek made the tackle. You see Dan Reeves with a list of plays in his hand. He has those plays broken down by down and distance. He has no preference on a particular time to call those plays, but what you're seeing now is coming off that list. He probably has what he calls a two-minute list, where he wants to move the ball quickly and control it from the outside. You see him looking ahead. He's already called his next play. Most of this huge crowd of over 90,000 still with us. Second and five. Complete. But inbounds as the tackle is made of Butch Johnson at the 39-yard line. Eight yards and a first down. 127. And they're not going to use a timeout here. And the clock is chewing up. Play being signaled in from the sideline. Kubiak trying to get everybody to the line, but they've used a lot of time. And this is where you miss your number one quarterback. It's taking a long time to get this play off. Devouring the seconds. Incomplete, intended for Sawyer, and Davis made the play. Mike Davis. 
One minute exactly. Well, of course, the incomplete pass stops the clock. It's going to be second and ten, but an awful lot of time run off the clock. And again, that's a matter of experience. You can't really learn to use that clock effectively unless you have a chance to play in these pressurized situations. And we said it early, Kubiak, in spite of his inexperience, has done an excellent job in this ball game. Second and ten for this youngster from Texas A&M. Those are not bad numbers at all. Butch Johnson at the 29, a first down, and clock running. Will they use, yes, the timeout there with 50 seconds left. Butch Johnson diving back for that ball. Kubiak is putting some heat on the ball. Did not have it on target, but very often a good receiver can make a quarterback look good on one like that. One timeout left for Reeves and the Broncos. Looking over the day's activity, every first place team has won or is winning. Miami winning will be 9-0 and oh, a three-game lead in the East in the Central Division. Pittsburgh won. They still lead Cincinnati by two. In the West, no matter who wins here, a first place team will have won and go 8-1. and one. In the East of the NFC, Dallas and St. Louis both winning and Washington losing, so apparently the Cowboys and Cardinals will be tied at six and three in the Central Division. The Bears are now six and three, a three-game lead, and waiting to host the Raiders next Sunday. And in the West, the 49ers romping against the Rams will be eight and one and a three-game lead. But of all those teams, perhaps this one, the Denver Broncos, the biggest surprise of all, and especially coming in here, the home of the Raiders, and playing uh, a magnificent game. And the Raiders continue on their streak of playing just well enough to win, although they certainly haven't won this one yet. They've really only had one quarter of what, what their coaches would describe as intense total team football. That was the third quarter of last week's San Diego game when they just exploded offensively and exploded defensively. But I think Tom Flores has got to be a little frustrated with the with the fact that they can't get it all together on the same day for a total game. First down at the 29-yard line. 50 seconds left. Kubiak almost intercepted. Otis McKinney playing Sawyer very well. Sawyer the H-back, and McKinney is that fifth defensive back often taking that second tight end. Kubiak lucky that that one didn't get carried away. He's getting good pressure. You saw Howie Long reaching for him. I think he felt that pressure, tried to get it off a little early, threw behind Sawyer. Sawyer did a good job of getting his hands in between the ball and Otis McKinney's hands. Otherwise, that might well have been intercepted. It's been a patient drive by Kubiak and the Broncos. They haven't tried to go for the big one too soon, but they're running out of time. Second and ten. Almost caught, but right through the hands of Watson. Thought I saw a flag down, but it was a hat down. Apparently, a, a Bronco had stepped out of bounds. So it's third and ten. Steve Watson, who has caught some passes that were almost unbelievable today, had one there that he could have caught. He was getting a lot of heat from number 23, Otis McKinney, who seems to be everywhere in this defense. Otis hit him just as soon as he touched the ball. I think perhaps that is what broke up the catch. One timeout left for Denver. 40 seconds remain. And two downs now to get 10 yards to keep it going. Out of the shotgun. He's got to get the first now. Kubiak on a quarterback draw. He's got a first down and more all the way to the 13-yard line. There's the final timeout used by Denver. 30 seconds left, and Kubiak scrambling. Actually, a design play, a quarterback draw. I think by the way it was run, it was indeed called from the sideline, and Kubiak did a good job of just dipping up in there and getting everything he could out of the play. Reeves doing a good job of digging into his list and finding a couple of winners. He needs one now that'll give him seven points. There he is. He sets up. See, he gets a block there that knocked Townsend out of the way. He had to get away from Townsend and diving for the first down. Paul Howard, number 60, the man who threw the block for him that really broke him loose at the line of scrimmage. There's the scoring of the game. We want to thank Andy Rosenberg, our director, and 
Kenneth Roy Edmondson, what a guy. On his birthday, on, on his, his birthday, birthday, he refuses to celebrate and stay home in the comfort with his family in New York. He's here on the job drilling away all these cameramen and tape machines. And happy birthday to Ken Edmondson. Any idea how old he's getting to be? Old enough. I'd like to welcome those of you to the Raiders Broncos football game here in Los Angeles still in progress the score the Raiders 19 Denver driving for a possible tying touchdown stay tuned for the following programs on NBC tonight first Silver Spoons followed by Punky Brewster and Knight Rider then it's the City Killer a world premiere movie that's tonight on NBC right now we have some drama building Denver Broncos the underdogs scrapping scrambling have recovered a fumble deep in their own end of the field and they've driven in the final three minutes to the Raider 13 yard line. They're without a timeout. 30 seconds left. First down. Going for a time score. They almost have to pass the ball. There it is to Watson. Touchdown. The touchdown. Watson breaking loose, and they've done a great job of getting those outside receivers, the wide receivers, loose on the Raider defense. An outstanding job. But Dick, one sobering thought. Keith Bishop, the normal center, is not in the ball game. They're going to have, unless maybe he's gone in for this. It looks like he may have gone in. They missed an extra point because of a bad snap. This one is good, and the game is tied. Bishop, in spite of his injury, was in the ball game, put himself in the ball game because of, and because of the problems they'd had with the snap. He said, "Hey, I'm going in." So Ted Kubiak, an eighth-round pick a year ago, certainly caught in the shadow of the number one pick in the entire draft, Elway, subbing for the injured John Elway today, and he leads his team dramatically, almost the full length of the field, and with seconds remaining, hits Steve Watson with this touchdown. And the Broncos with the extra point have tied it at 19. Gary Kubiak, what a job he's done. Don't think they're happy. Look at the enthusiasm there. Now, after a full four quarters of banging and snagging and hitting and biting there, they've got to go at it again. Although, a little bit of time left on that clock. 24 seconds showing, or we have overtime, and got to go back to what the Broncos have done so well all year. They're the number one team in the NFL, enforcing mistakes and not making mistakes of your own. They're now a plus 20 overall. That's an amazing statistic. The Redskins enjoyed that kind of number last year. Now, a fumble recovery by Marcus Allen, deep in Denver's end, when it appeared the Raiders were in position at least to secure a win with a field goal and a 10-point lead. They recover in a long march downfield, 84 yards and 11 plays and look where momentum is gone in this game in Los Angeles. Now the Raiders are an experienced team, a veteran team. Let's see what they do with the pressure on. Kick down to Clee Montgomery and he has drilled at the 22 yard line. So 21 seconds, what do you do? Do you try to gamble on a couple of long bombs? Or you just say, hey, let's play it in overtime. I think you wait for the overtime. I, you may take one shot here, uh, take a percentage pass. You, the one thing you don't want to do is hand that football off to somebody in a white uniform. You don't want to turn it over. Jim Plunkett there, you see a portion of him behind the young man with the blonde hair. Bucket with a torn stomach muscle has been out of the lineup for about two weeks now and expected soon to be activated, although he is healing slowly. Well, they might they haven't lined up in a time killing alignment. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to do. They'll that will be the final play. play because the Broncos do not have a timeout. But the Denver Broncos coming in here as a Underdog, many felt that the Raiders are really waiting that this was the game they would be up for. But the Broncos have shown that defensively they deserve all those flattering numbers. They really shut down the Raider offense and they have forced the turnovers that have allowed them to rally to tie. They were down 12 nothing, and it was 12 6 at the half, then 19 6, but 13 unanswered points by Denver have tied it in the fourth quarter. And how very big that missed extra point. 
because of the missing center and the bad snap. But Keith Bishop, as we uh, mentioned, put himself back on the field to make sure that that last one was snapped properly. Well, the toss of the coin can be very important. Team that'll get the football first. You know what the Raiders would like to do, and well, what Reeves would like to do too. You want first shot at it. Tom Jackson and Dave Dalby will be involved in the toss with Fred Silva, the referee. Captains is the point. Heads, tails, all in the air. And the Raiders have won the toss, apparently. Jackson will decide now which side of the field they want to work from. It's almost you'd like the sun in the defender's eyes. What breeze there is is going left to right, however, in a field goal. That might help a long try. We'll be back in Los Angeles after these messages from your local station. And these messages from your local station. There's the answer to our trivia question, and uh, that record will not be challenged today. Davidson back in 1964 a 419-yard day against Denver that's the most yardage ever compiled by a Raider quarterback and that certainly is a surprising answer it certainly is and Dick the Raiders have given us a lot of drama this past two weeks the last week's game against the Chargers down to the final seconds and a penalty really kept the touchdown from being scored there or the, that game would have gone into overtime this is the play that put this game in overtime Steve Watson who has made several brilliant catches today, leaning that six foot four inch frame into the corner of the end zone to snare six. And Dan Reeves, young Broncos, are in overtime, both clubs in extra quarter for the first time this year. Wilson waiting for his opportunity to perform, and Reeves wanted to talk to his kickoff team. He wanted to get them over for just a second. And in a way, maybe this is what Reeves would have wanted. He puts his best unit on the field. He puts his defense out there. And if they can get a turnover, as they have in so many crucial situations today, he may end up with better field position for his offense than he would get off the kickoff. Could come down to the field goal kickers. Remember, Barr missed a 47-yarder that could have been the victory as well late in the game. A bit surprised as to why they elected to take the end of the field they did Denver because what win there is is blowing the flags toward the peristyle end. So the Raiders not only are going to get the football first but they're going to get the prevailing breeze. I don't know if you have time to think about all those things. Maybe there is some specific reason that Reeves has for wanting that end of the field. The low flags of course not fluttering much but the flags down at the other end of the Coliseum uh, starts down. Carlos kicks it off. his better kicks today. Doki Williams. Doki Williams on to the 30-yard line. He's had some excellent returns today, including the opening kickoff beginning the game when he went 61 yards. 25 on that return by the former UCLA track star. I bet Doki is tired. He hasn't started many games in his career. He wasn't a starter at UCLA. I think this is his first start as a Raider. And I know emotionally that really drains you. One of the Broncos now. Is that, that's not Busick, is it? No, it's Aaron Smith, number 56. 56. All right, I can see the five and the lower part of the second number. We should talk. Uh, many folks have joined us through the course of this telecast at the start of the game. We talked about injuries. Jim Plunkett injured. Mark Wilson now the starting quarterback. John Elway injured and... Kubiak has replaced him today, but Cliff Branch, the veteran wide receiver for the Raiders, has grown full. He has not played today, so that's why Doki Williams is seeing so much duty. There's Plunkett, the former Stanford Heisman winner. I asked Plunkett if, if he talks a lot to Mark Wilson on the sideline when Wilson comes off. He said, only if he wants to ask a question or if I sense that he wants something from me. A, a lot of respect between those two quarterbacks as you see Aaron Smith going off almost under his own power. A little help from Steve. Antonopoulos, the trainer of the uh, Denver Broncos. All right, here's where they dig in. First points, safety field goal, touchdown. Win it, sudden death. Wilson comes out throwing, good protection, and wide open is Williams. First down at the 47-yard line. Harden made the hit. The Raiders, a big play defense. A big play offense. They come up with the big play on the first play of the extra period here. Reuben Carter right in 
Wilson's face, but doesn't stop him from getting the ball in in front of Mike Hart, number 31, and Williams using his speed to push Harden off deep. 18 yards on that play. Wilson dumps it off. Oh, dangerously to Marcus Allen as Ken Woodard was right there. Uh, he was face mask to face mask. And those of you who've been with us throughout this broadcast will remember a shot that we showed you in our opening. Mecklenburg hitting Marcus Allen, leveling him. Gotta wonder if maybe that same feeling wasn't going through his mind as he saw Woodard with his sights locked in on him. That ball was not nearly as important. <laughs> Second and 10. 15 minute period. any chance of a mistake you can get a lot of coaches to say yes we get it down close enough we take the shot right now on the field goal it would appear that Tom Flores is discussing that with his staff right now on the sideline and he's opted to go for another play you can bet on one thing they won't risk the kind of play that you can get an easy turnover off of time to throw here Busick the blitz is on, one on one. Louis Wright, Malcolm Barnwell. Wright wins that battle, and the pass was perfect. First down at the 10, Hawkins. He's going for the tight. He may have fumbled it. He did. The Broncos have recovered. How do you do? And the one thing that Tom Flores has got to be saying is let's do anything, but let's not fumble the ball. That ball again, stripped loose. The Bronco defense has done it time after time after time today. I, I can't understand why they didn't go for the field goal. You can almost see that coming because this is what the Broncos have done. They forced another turnover. That is their strength. Mike Harden, I believe the man who used his arms to pull that loose, I believe he stripped it loose and they're pouncing on it quickly. They're 94, 95 yards, 93 yards away from the end zone. But and they they've went, got a chance now. They went 84 the last time to tie it. Now a plus 21 on the turnover table, the Broncos. Oh, what a hit as Wilhite is met sharply by Bill Paquel. 91. Or check that. Yes, 71. There's Paquel. I'm sure there are people who are saying, why is it that this Denver Broncos team can take the football away like that? Well, one thing they do, they really work on stripping the football. They work probably more aggressively on that than any other team in football besides the Seattle Seahawks. And those two teams do a better job of stripping the football away than any in football. In overtime, the Raiders with a glorious chance, a first down at the 10, but fumble it back to Denver. Raider defense making it tough on the Broncos. It'll be third down and about three. Will Height now carrying the ball after Sammy Winder more than 100 yards. The leading rusher in the game. That's 23 Winder coming into the game now. And they're trying to Kubiak saying, get those receivers in here. Come on, let's not take too much time here. Clock ticking down. minutes left in the overtime. Ten seconds now on the 30-second clock. That's the one he's worried about. Here he goes. Five seconds. Out of the shotgun. Two. He closed. Oh, he got it. Hands it off to Will Height. Will Height is to the 16-yard line, short of the first down. It appears. It looked like Will Height was going to have a chance to make that going wild, wide, opted to cut it back against the grain and did not make it, Dick. Now, do you go for it here or do you kick the football away? Again, got to kick it away. Well, yes, but you got to wonder if Keith Bishop is going to be able to go in there in center or if they'll have to use Brian on this one. Fourth down and a full yard, not close. Do that. And Reeves not wanting 
to take any chances that deep in his own end. He has played a patient, mind you, a conservative game, but it's been styled to play the Raiders well here at home, and it's worked for him. It's exactly the game plan he talked about yesterday when we chatted with him. Pete Bishop has gone in to do the snapping in spite of that injury, and you can see him limping up to the line. They want that ball comfortably snapped to Norman. They need some distance from the goal line here. Greg Pruitt, who has had some trouble handling the kicks today, is at the Raider 45. Back to he's muffed a couple. Good snap. And a good kick. Throw it all the way back to his 34. 45. And he's to the 49-yard line. Boy, those Broncos are tackling the football at every opportunity. 50-yard punt. A good 15-yard return by the veteran Pruitt. Almost too good a kick. Out kicked his coverage, and Pruitt able to elude a man and get around. Look at Bishop limping down the field. 54 coming down. Roger Jackson, 28, faked out of his shoes on that play. Good job. Aaron Smith going down. But finally, they got him down, and the Raider offense back on the field. And that's had the Bronco defense. That's right. <laughs> As the old uh, line might be, uh, we got him right where we want him. <laughs> the defense is on the field for Denver, and, and Tom Flores has his offense. Both sides strength on the field, apparently, at least in this one. At midfield, this crowd of 91,020, over 92,000 tickets sold, created to an overtime battle, two teams 7-1. Christensen. Pass was low and outside. Music, the closest Bronco defender. Mark Wilson kind of falling away from the receiver as he delivered that pass and did not get enough on it. He obviously doesn't want to overthrow that pass. If you miss it, you want to miss it short. Here's the shot. Let's watch his feet now. Looks like he's kind of dropping back as he threw that pass. Didn't follow through all the way with it and ends up putting it down in front of Todd Christensen. territory at the 40-yard line, 10:35. Plenty of time remaining in this overtime period. I can feel the adrenaline pumping down there. You can see a couple of tired teams, but they are pumped. Wilson on first down, looking long, and almost deflected away to the man that was not in on the coverage. Foley coming over as Louis Wright batted it loose, and Foley was in the area. Barnwell, the intended target. That was the combination that set it up deep in Bronco territory last time. Bars expecting a quicker call from the wings on this occasion if indeed the Raiders can get down inside his kicking range. Raiders took command early, led 12 to nothing, and a couple of fumbles recovered by the Broncos led to field goals, 12-6 at the half. Raiders made it 19-6, but 13 unanswered points by the Broncos in the fourth quarter forced this overtime at a 19-19 tie. Marcus Allen, who has fumbled twice today, and he's wrapped up after short yardage. Andre Townsend, the rookie from Mississippi, making the hit, and Allen limping more and more. You can feel the fatigue. Talked about rolling people in and out. Andre Townsend, a couple of young linemen in there. Scott Garnett is doing, has been playing quite a bit for the Broncos in that defensive line, but he is, has a toe injury, so we're seeing a lot of Andre Townsend today. But those linemen have to be exhausted. Well, both teams have to be exhausted after the end of this day. Third and eight. They're out of field goal range. They want to get the least to the 30. Big play. Under a blitz. Wilson. So Marcus Allen laterals a free ball, and Henry Lawrence, the right tackle, number 70, picks it up. And oh my, is that playing into the Broncos' hands? You see Marcus shaking his head. He is so happy to see Lawrence come up with that football. 
had they lost this football, he would have been reamed, I'm sure, by the coaches. Wilson, and it's questionable whether he was in the grasp of the Denver defense. Marcus throwing that ball to Henry Lawrence, or for to Hawkins, I believe, and Lawrence reached up thinking it was to him. Batted it, got a hold of it, luckily held on to it. With well, those big panted hands of the lineman, Lawrence indeed showed considerable dexterity to latch onto it. I don't think he wanted to throw it to Lawrence. Great guy to kick. Rookie Tony Lilly now back at the 10. Low snap. Guy aiming for the sidelines. Lilly has a play at the 9. Right, Zach Thomas, number 82. And a good return to the 21-yard line by Thomas. A little better field position for the Broncos. Derek Jensen made the tackle. 33-yard punt, 11-yard return. 8-32 left in this overtime period in Los Angeles. Denver Broncos and the L.A. Raiders are tied up at 19. See Punky Brewster, Silver Spoons. I'm afraid to have to wait another week for Silver Spoons. We ask for your indulgence, especially you young people, but sit back and enjoy what's a nice piece of drama football here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Punky Brewster to follow, the Knight Rider. We have a world premiere movie tonight here on NBC, so stay with us. 8.32 left in the overtime. Broncos take over at their 21-yard line. a tired looking winder that accepted that pitch back from his quarterback on the game winder has carried 27 times 107 yards for the southern mississippi star short yardage second down about nine and a half carlos hoping he gets a chance the call again and steps out of bounds at the 27 yard line short of a first down by four let's quickly run down all the scores for you in case you hadn't heard new england beat the jets 30 to 20 dallas 22 indianapolis three the bears won 16 to 7 at home against minnesota pittsburgh 35 10 defeat atlanta it was st louis 34 philadelphia 14 kansas city edged tampa bay 24 20 cincinnati rolled over houston 31 13 green bay 41 detroit 9 new orleans 16 Cleveland. 14. San Francisco shut out the Rams 33 nothing. Give you the rest in a moment. Third down and four play for Kubiak. Steps out of bounds, and I believe he has the first down at the 32 yard line. The other finals, Miami made it 9-0, the only unbeaten team in the NFL, 38-7. They defeated Buffalo, and the Giants upset the Redskins 37-13. Kubiak limping as he heads back for the huddle, and again, Kubiak's running ability has made a big play. Kubiak, of course, running to set up that touchdown that tied the ball game. Here he is heading out of bounds. He'll duck just beyond the yard marker and look like he planted that right ankle a little bit, maybe, maybe sprained a little bit. His quarterback draw that set up the tying touchdown. A big hole for Winder. And Lyle Alzado finally gets him from the side along with uh, Jeff Barnes. Dick, we started the day talking about controlling the line of scrimmage. Neither team has had a clear-cut dominance in this game, but it's been Winder's running and the blocking of a patched-up Denver offensive line that has kept them offensively in this game in the second half. That in combination with the great play and the turnovers by their defense. Well, you said the team that would run the football best today, control the run, would win the game. And at this point, it's Denver that has that slight edge. Winder again with blockers. And he's finally knocked out of bounds at, I believe, a first down distance at the 43-yard line. Five more yards for Sammy Winder. Boy, the Raiders, I don't know who's writing their copy, their, their storylines, but last week they came with an, well, a fumble by the rookie Benbros of the two that would have tied it and set it into overtime against San Diego, but they won on an interception. Overtime against Denver, and next week the Chicago Bears waiting for their chance at the World Champions. And we'll be at Soldier Field. We hope you'll join us. First half, it'll be our doubleheader on NBC. A big game in the second half. We'll have unbeaten Miami at New York Jets. 
touchdown, Denver. Moving methodically. Winder. Caught from behind by Bill Pickell. And we should mention as part of the injury situation in this game, two critical losses for the Raiders in the development of this contest. Rod Martin, the all-pro linebacker who had a safety to start the scoring, and middle linebacker Matt Millen. A lot of injuries and a lot of fatigue setting in on the field. You can imagine now these players giving it all they have for four quarters, and suddenly they've got to go an extra 15 minutes, and it's a lot longer than that. The emotional drain alone of stepping into a, an overtime situation is something it's something that really saps your deck. And you see Winder, you see him dropping down. I don't know whether it's his ankle that's bothering or just the fact that he is exhausted over there. Gerald Wilhite, a number one draft pick a couple of years ago from San Jose State, has replaced Winder. Ooh, right into the midst of And there's a flag, apparently, against the Raiders, which Johnson was appealing. But, but he wasn't it. even looking at the ball. No, no. It looked like it might have been... Was it Lester Hayes on Butch Johnson going up into traffic there? Let's see. Defense pass interference from the 51. Uh, Bob, Nelson. Bob Nelson. Bob yeah. Nelson. Let's see where they mark the interference call. 12-yard penalty on Nelson. Nelson calling the defenses, as you had indicated, because of Millen's absence from that lineup. Here he is on the left-hand side of your screen, and you see him taking the shot right there, taking Bush Johnson out of that play, but he was beyond the five-yard line. Either that or the ball was in the air, one or the other. It was called interference. From the 48-yard line, Will Hyde with running room. 45-40, 35-33, and look at that Denver sidelines. Dan Reeves has this young Bronco team really believing. First and 10 Broncos. And they're very close to field goal range themselves. What an exciting moment for them as they get down into their own turf now and they can begin to sense an opportunity to put this game away. You saw Carlos begin to re ready himself on the sideline and Will Hyde just lowered his shoulder and went at if they kicked it right now, it would be a 50-yard field goal. So that's a little too long. The Broncos are closing in, and they're moving it on the ground. Will Hike closed off by McElroy and Barnes. Interesting that the Broncos have run so many times today, but they have done a good job of keeping their hands on the football, although Winder did cough one up early that was costly to them. But there you saw Bob Zeman, the man calling the signal, signaling them in, and Reeves again looking to that magic card in his hands. Needs a little inspiration here. Second and eight. They have done this, this drive basically on the on the back of good running from Winder and Wilhite. 52 left in the overtime. Will Hyde again. And he's to the 27-yard line. That would make it a 44-yard field goal. So they are now within a legitimate range of a possible winning kick and have a third down to work with. Third and five. And let's credit that patchwork offensive line. I'm sure that wonder if his feet uh, perspire when he thinks about the emotion <laughs> of the moment. Barefooted kicker, Rich Carlos. Alex Gibbs, Marvin Bass, the guys that were thinking about it. Let's look down at that foot. I, maybe it twitches. I don't know, Dick. Out of the shotgun. A safe play. Oh. Will height to the 24-yard line. It'll be short of the first down by a yard plus. And here comes Carlos to try to win it. It looked like Will height had he been able to keep his balance, would have had a first down. The play, I think, designed to get a few more extra yards and give them a chance. Now it's all on the back. Uh, Rich Carlos, free agent pick, as so many kickers are, from the University of Cincinnati. This to beat the world champions, a 42-yard kick. The Raiders will give him an opportunity to contemplate the pressure of the moment. To think about it. Timeout. 335 left in the overtime. We'll be back with a winning try. A premier movie city killer to follow. And now it's Rich Carlos' turn on stage.
relationship to Smith. No good. It missed to the left. This crowd of over 91,000 with hope, a 42-yard miss by Carlos. Oh, it looked good midway. He had plenty of leg. He hooked the ball. It couldn't have missed by much. Let's look at Carlos and watch his reaction. The ball hooking, hooking. He's trying to get a little body English on it, and he knows. The Raiders with the ball at the 25-yard line as Shelby Jordan rubs it in a bit. Now the Raiders have three and a half minutes. They've used their timeout in the overtime. Well, both teams have dodged a bullet now in the overtime, Dick. Wilson will throw. And an excellent defensive play by Louis Wright as he reaches around Barnwell to knock it away. Right, the veteran from San Jose State. So good that very rarely does he get a lot of action. They usually throw to the other side, or at least that's been the case through his 10 years with the Broncos. One of the reasons, obviously, today, the fact that Branch, as we've said several times, out of the lineup, they put a lot of pressure on Malcolm Barnwell. He usually lines up on the right-hand side, and that means he goes head-to-head -head with number 20, Louis Wright. They both won some of those battles today, but Louis won that one cleanly. Dangerously flopping into an open space. Mecklenburg. He was the man that put that vicious hit on Marcus Allen that was symptomatic of play in the first game up in Denver, and he came in on the blind side. Mecklenburg working as both linebacker and lineman in given situations, powering in and really leveling Wilson. Wilson doing a good job of starting that arm forward to simulate the pass. Had he not been going forward and that ball snapped back, it would have been another fumble. The hit alone would have catapulted the ball 20 yards. Look at this, Dick. Six forced fumbles. Four recovered, two interceptions on the day, a total of six turnovers. Flag down. Wilson. Taken out of bounds by Ken Woodard. And now we'll check the penalty. Will it be fourth down, Raiders, or will the penalty give Los Angeles another chance? Wilson taking some real heat here as he was snapped down by Woodard on the far side, or on the near side. The flag was dropped by one of the linesmen as the play was executed. Not at the end of the play. I think perhaps the flag dropped against the Denver Offensive defense. Offensive end, no. offside, 49 the defense, illegal use of the hands, replay. Third so the down. Raiders, and that's, uh, they came out of that as well as they might have hoped because they do get another chance on third down and 10. You see Tom Flores talking to Mark Wilson, Raider quarterbacks, as we have said several times, uh, among the few in the NFL still allowed to call their own plays, but in this critical situation, some input from the head coach. Three minutes, ten seconds left in this overtime period. A battle for first place, all that one might have expected between the Broncos and the Raiders at 7-1 and one in the AFC West. Look out. Wilson is down at the 17-yard line, persevering for 61, Andre Townsend. That's the third sack by the Broncos, and the rookie Townsend apparently got to Wilson first. Townsend with great quickness for a big man will come all the way around from the left-hand side of your screen. Watch him coming in from the back side here. Just perseverance as he finally gets to Wilson's legs. And Mark, I think, sensing that he might get hurt if he didn't come down. Went to the ground, and Ray Guy will get an opportunity here. And the Broncos will have field position. Zach Thomas at the other end at the Bronco 39. There's 248 left. Ten men on the line of scrimmage for Denver. 
short kick. Thomas at the 39. And a good open field tackle by Jeff Barnes. What a specialty teams player he is. 44 yard kick, three yard return. And now we're getting to the point, Merlin, where this might well be the last possession by an offense. 2.31 left. The Denver Broncos do have one timeout left. The last time a game ended in a tie after five quarters last year. Almost a year ago to the day, 2020, the Cardinals and Giants to a standoff. And in some ways, that would almost be apropos the way these two teams have played. Don't tell that to a Denver fan. I'll say that to a Denver fan for sure. They stay on the ground. Winder. Oh, he just has the ability to find a crack in the defense, picks his way for about five. Now, let me ask you a tough question. If you were picking the most valuable player from this day, who in the world would you choose? Now, you'd have to, I could, I could pick a unit, right? You, you, offensively for Denver, you'd have to say Sammy White or maybe Kubiak. Uh, I, what a brilliant I, day. I got to give a real thought to Gary Kubiak coming in with the pressure. You know, you know, what, you know what's been nice about Kubiak? And I think it's partly the kind of help that he's gotten from Dan Reeves is that Reeves has not asked him to do things this day that he could not do. Kubiak has responded by making few mistakes. And in doing that, along with the brilliant play of the Bronco defense, they have stayed in this game. They've been able to bring it to this point with a chance to win it. We'll be back. Two minutes left. Rich Carlos had one chance and just hooked wide from 42 yards in this overtime period and looking for another opportunity. The Broncos had the ball at their 45, second and six. Two minutes left. on now at the Coliseum. Little misdirection and a pickup of five for Winder. Sammy Winder. He's right off the sheet. He's carried the ball so many. 31 times now for 128 yards. Crowd Los Angeles notorious for folks leaving for their automobiles early to get on the freeway and beat the traffic. But we would say that there's 70,000 still with us. Very few empty seats, Dick. Big play, third and two. With 124 left. And a break of one tackle, but he's short of the first down. And the Raiders may get a final opportunity. Jack Squirek. Playing for the injured Rod Martin made the tackle. Jeff Barnes upfield missed the initial tackle, but still slowed the play down enough that Winder not able to turn the corner. Got another opportunity here as the clock ticking down. Precious seconds, a minute 18 left, and you've got to wonder if maybe the option would be here to try and go for the block on the kick. Pressure will be on Chris Norman with Greg Pruitt at the other end. Ten men up front for the Raiders. Yeah, they're going out to cover. Looks like they're going to return it. No fake at the Bronco end, and beautiful high spiral, and a fair catch by Pruitt. Fumbles the ball! A free ball. Who's got it? No, no official word yet. Broncos think they have it. And we've got a flag going down now. It's the Denver Broncos who have recovered. And maybe that's as it should be. The Broncos who have forced so many turnovers on this day. What has happened now? Number 28, Jackson, was the man who came up with the football. Roger Jackson, one of the many rookies, one of 15 on this Denver team. And now the flag. Fred Silva has sorted it out. Here's the word. The fair catch signal was given. Muffed the ball. The ball went up. He has by, by rule, he has right to catch the ball. He was interfered with. 15 yards, first down. Oh, my. Now, there's a call that really leaping through the book. That, that's into the doctoral program. You don't get that with just a bachelor's degree. You've got to really go through the library to find that one. Now, we had the call earlier. When the ball went through Pruitt's hands, 
when it appeared to us that he was interfered with. Now, I question whether he was interfered with on that one. It looked like Jackson gave him room, Dick. No, I think he's saying that once he bobbled oh, it, he had the right to go for the ball. Yes. And in their judgment, he didn't have the chance to go for the ball. When the ball bounces in the air before it hits the ground, he does have a second shot at it. You're right. You're and absolutely right. You can see right. that again. Dan Reeves' total disbelief. It appeared that the Broncos had taken the ball away again. Let's go back and pick it up. Now, that's the one they used to talk about in the seminars when they came to camp. They said you can't knock him down. He has a chance to go after that ball when it is in the air. They didn't knock him down. They didn't knock him down. They went for the ball. Pruitt was down on his own accord. It appeared that that is the ruling that the Raiders got another break. 104 left. Marcus Allen. Flag is down. Wouldn't it be a shame now if the, an official decision decided this game? It's 19 all, and almost at this point, a poetic justice is on the board, 19 aside. I want to thank Joe Costanzo, who's working on his third page of statistical notes. Great job, as always, Joe, Tim Tallman, Steve Hartman, Jim Pell, Offense, Danny Moore for their help. Holding there's the, the play down. again. Final shot, and they're, they're saying that no matter what happens, when that ball bounces in the air, you have to give Pruitt a chance to come back and catch it. But that the instinct is to go for the football. I mean, you, what they're saying, what they're saying is right, though, Dick. The rule states that if it bounces off his pads or it bounces up into the air, the defense you, has to you've stop. Gotta, you've got to let him at least come after the football. It is in the book. First down and 20. There was a holding call against the Raiders. 54 seconds left. All day for Wilson. Is it a no? He trapped the ball at the 32 yard line. That stops the clock with 49 seconds. Now for the Raiders, they must be aware with 49 seconds left and second and 20. If they throw the ball in, are not successful. If there are incomplete passes stopping the clock, the Broncos could still get another chance. Now, how conservative do you want to get if you're Tom Flores? There are the Raiders, Raiders and Broncos tied games. This one may end up that way. I don't know, Dick. I, I think I would call a timeout, certainly if I'm the Bronco coach right after this play, unless it's already stopped. They have one timeout remaining. They've got two. Two awarded in the overtime period. And, of course, the Raiders with one. 49 seconds showing. Wilson down the middle. Intercepted. Another turnover. This is Jackson, the man who had the muff recovery earlier, and he's to the 23, and the Broncos are there. He said, I knew it all along. I had it before. I just wanted to show you that it was ours all along. So the Broncos. <laughs> you talk about being put through an emotional ringer. On both sides, they're just they're going to have to bring a, a bunch of carts out here and and carry these players off the field at the end of this one. Can you imagine what they're like up in Mile High City? They're going to be a lot of drained fans. The way they must have been cheering for this Denver team have shown considerable metal. They have made use of most every opportunity. They're a bad throw as Williams wasn't looking, or at least Williams made a bad move by not looking for the ball. And Roger Jackson. Returns it to the 22. The Broncos aren't going to kick it right away, though. I think they're going to try to square it up, although it's almost in the middle of the field. 38 seconds. Winder straight ahead to about the 23-yard line. Now, do you take another shot at it? You run the clock down to two seconds and then kick it. So many turns and twists in this game. And back and forth. Well, Rich Carlos, he's going to have a chance to decide it. They're going to let the clock run down. They'll probably stop it with a couple of seconds left. And then it'll be a matter of whether Carlos can hit one from 35 yards. It'll be a 35-yard attempt. Braves is saying, do it now. We don't want to take a chance on it. Now, you've got to wonder if maybe the Raiders will wait until the timeout has been called back in and then call their timeout and keep Carlos waiting as they did before. And that seemed to work as Carlos missed from farther out. But this will be an easier chance, 35 yards. On the Raiders' sideline, Steve Ortmeyer is the special teams coach. You saw him conferring there, and that's the man of the hour. I never wanted to be a kicker, Dick. Uh, they, they're much maligned, as, uh, as Chris Barr himself, the Raider kicker, said. You know, my wife thought that was my first name, because every time she read my name in the paper, said, much maligned, Chris Barr. <laughs> And indeed, they, all the pressure on them. Uh, Alex Kerr said, well, they just come out and after you struggle for 59 and a half minutes and someone who can't even speak English kicks a touchdown. But uh, the truth is that every time they're out there, all the weight's on their shoulders. 
There's no place to hide. And we'd indicated earlier, we said it several times, Keith Bishop showing us some real grit. We're injured early in this game and realizing that substitute snapper on these kicks was having trouble. He has come back in to kick or to snap on the kicks, and that has been crucial. Well, they'll either be 7, 1, and 1, both the Raiders and Broncos, or Rich Carlos will send the Broncos home in first place, 8 and 1. Coming up with all the scores after these messages from your local station. The final in Los Angeles, 91,000 plus. The world champion Raiders have been defeated by the Denver Broncos. And Dan Reeves has the game ball, 22-19, via the barefoot of Rich Carlos. And I've got to say, I'd love to be on that plane going home. They are going to celebrate. This Coliseum crowd stunned. The Broncos scored 13 points to rally from 19 to 6, tying it in the fourth quarter. Missed an extra point of their own or might have won in regulation. And then the story of their season, turning the ball over, getting the turnovers. And once again, they were able to find the loose football. And an interception led to Rich Carlos's winning kick. These words from your local station. 